What's up everyone? Welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table we're playing our solo campaign through Age of Tyranny expansion for Too Many Bones. It's to turn Too Many Bones, which is an awesome game already, into, in my opinion, an even awesomer game. That's right, awesomer. Hello everyone, joining live. Thank you for showing up. <laughs> I appreciate your time. So we're going to be starting this campaign today. I don't know how far we'll get. Because in the campaign of this game, it's hardcore. If you lose in an adventure, like in a play session, uh, you're done. You're just, you're just out. It's over. So this could go as far as seven episodes. It could go as far as today's the only episode. But we'll find out at the end. Another reason to stick around to the end to find out uh, is if we are going on today too, I will be posting a poll, which I'll create at the end of the stream while you guys are still here of what to carry forward to the next day because usually there's like uh sometimes there's a chance to pick the tyrant uh versus random so i'll let you guys vote on that if that comes up during this playthrough we'll do a vote on that uh and we could also do a vote on which uh training points and loot i keep if there are options so i will at the end of this stream if you stick around uh i'll add add the result or i'll add the options to a poll and i'll drop the link in the chat and i'll add it to the description of this video so if you're watching this in the future, uh, before the second episode starts, so literally like within the next 24 hours, uh, vote and you can determine uh, which gear lock or which uh, tyrant we play against if there's a choice. We don't know there's a choice yet. Uh, we'll draw it at the end of this one, assuming we don't lose today. And then also we will uh, put in there which training points to spend on skill dice or train on uh, our regular stats and then which loot to keep. Um, there's also other stuff that could be in there. What else? Uh, we did play Age of Tyranny before, so if you're curious to see a three-player playthrough of this, I've linked that down in the description below. Uh, we do have that on a playlist where we played through that before uh, with Mel and Justin on the channel. So this time it's solo. I'm just doing it with Gilly, and thank you to our Patreon backers for supporting the channel and voting. Uh, and Gilly uh, won the vote, as you can see here. This guy right here. See this guy right there? Let me come. Get up his nose. Nope. Nope. Uh, uh. This is hard. It's like mirrored. I can't do it. Uh, but anyways, there's Gilly. Uh, that's who we're playing with today. Uh, it was almost Tantrum. Some people were trying to derail our playthrough. No, I'm just joking. But Tantrum is tough solo. I don't care what anyone says. He is tough. At default default level of difficulty, Tantrum by himself. I get worried he wouldn't make it through day one, especially with me driving him. But I know there's some players out there who are awesome with Tantrum. I'm not one of them. Uh, but I do want to try him again solo uh, sometime soon to see if I can... Now that I've played so many other gear locks, if I can, you know, come back to it with like a different, different uh, look and, and handle him differently. But uh, I see there's a bunch of you here live already. This is awesome. Uh, so just any questions? Oh, Bernardo's here. <laughs> Greetings from within the storm. Still searching for my Fravashi. <laughs> uh, played with my wife, lost with Gendrix. She was quite upset of his limit ability. Yeah, I can understand that. Limit is, like, I still think the roughest tyrant ability. Yeah, Duster has it too. Uh, Gendrix has it in, like, a less of, kind of, not as harsh manner, I don't think. I think they're slightly different in that respect. Um, but, yeah, Limit is disgusting. You work your way up, you put training points in those stats, and then you sit there with, like, the option of, like, uh, which die do I remove? Uh, this sucks. <laughs> That's why I'm always careful. I keep that in mind the whole playthrough and only put in, like, if my gear lock's weak on defense, maybe I'll just give him, like, one defense training point to prepare to remove that die first and then put everything else into skill dice. But you got to know that stuff right from the start. That's why in Setup and Too Many Bones, it's like, take the Tyrant card, analyze it, prepare. That's a big part of this game is preparation up to that Tyrant. So you have to, like, tweak your play, like, from the start. Uh, at least my that's my opinion. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Hello, Kyle. Good afternoon. Not familiar with Gilly. He's ordered. Looking to learn about him. Uh, he's cool. He's better solo than most. Um, he's definitely better solo than most. He's one of the more rounded solo gear locks, kind of. Uh, he has his weaknesses. So do all. Uh, but yeah, he's more range focused. Has some summoning of his, his pets. So he has a little animal sidekick stuff. And if you watch our Tink playthrough recently, uh, you're not going to get that kind of awesomeness from your companions as you do in a tank playthrough because tank is all about his spider bots and without them he is nothing <laughs> gilly on the other hand gilly is an offensive beast and the pets are like meat shield fodder if you're using them right 
throw them in the way, keep him from getting hit, and maybe they'll do a little damage. But really, Gilly is the damage output guy. He is, he's going to be shooting arrows all over the board and hopefully killing, killing people before he gets killed. Uh, 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 uh. And Sakabra was the last Gilly vote. I think he did win by like one vote. Sorry, not sorry, Sakabra. <laughs> yeah, I was shocked I looked and Tink was like, Tink and Gilly were like neck and neck. And then I, I messaged the rest of the Patreons to say, hey, like if not, nobody has voted, get in there and vote. Because it wasn't a lot of votes. And I know not everyone is familiar with Too Many Bones. Uh, so I was curious if some people would like vote for someone else to put them up in the running. Or, you know, maybe push Tantrum or Gilly way out in the lead. Uh, and but they stayed neck and neck still. It didn't change much, uh, but I do appreciate it. And then Sam says, "If Splice and Dice comes, just lose the next battle, and you're all ready to go." <laughs> yeah, that's true. No, no, no. We'll see if it comes. I, I don't know if it's coming for sure. Uh, and I'm in Canada, so everything coming from the U.S. and in my past Chip Theory orders uh, have all been delayed by an extra two plus weeks. Even stuff Chip Theory sent me during this COVID pandemic uh, showed up two to four weeks late and I've had stuff coming from all other publishers and countries and stuff and just because of COVID and the delays and social distancing and stuff uh yeah everything's like a month behind it, it's kind of nuts so yeah hopefully I get it if I don't I'll have to order it and but it'll still be a long time before I get it but we'll see we'll see maybe it does show up who knows who knows crazier things have happened uh boom <laughs> all right uh, let's get down to it. So again, for those just showing up, stick around to the end of the stream if you want, uh, or just if you can't stay the whole time, come back later to this video, check the description. I've already put a line in there, uh, of the video description and I'll post it as like a pinned comment when we're done, uh, of where you can vote to Adam. Thank you so much for pledging 10 via Patreon. Thank you so much, Adam. I'm assuming you've adjusted something there. Because I know you're a patron already. I don't know what you've done. And hopefully the alerts aren't broken and it's going to start spamming me. Which it's done before. Oh, there's the buzzer. Alright. Uh, so, stick around to the end. I am going to be doing a uh, poll. And that poll will be for... Uh, you can vote on. Everyone can vote on. It's not just locked behind Patreon uh, at all. I will post it on Patreon for those who aren't here. So they can get in on the vote. But I'm going to do it for those following along this series. After this episode's done. I, even when we're in the episode, I'm going to... Finish the poll, post it in the chat for those still sticking around, and you can vote on the setup for the next uh, next episode. So picking a Tyrant if that's possible, picking Skill Die, Training Points, Loot, anything that the campaign card uh, tells us to do on the back here. It has all different options depending on which one we draw, and we won't know until we finish this one. So that's why we're going to do this Age of Tyranny. I want you guys involved. Corey B, thank you so much. If you are a new Patreon, you are. Oh, Mel's giving me the nod. Mel's Mel's off to the side here. She can see things that I can't see while I'm streaming. So. Sorry for the buzz. And yeah, Mel, Mel's apologizing for that dryer buzz if you guys heard that. I forgot to get it. Yes, Corey is a new Patreon. I can see it in my email here. Thank you, Corey, if you're watching. You're awesome. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Happy to donate to Mel's gaming table. Yes! <laughs> Mel's laughing in the background. She can hear you. <laughs> That's it. I'm taking this whole thing offline. That's enough. No, I'm just joking. Thank you so much, Corey. <laughs> Yes, and Adam edited his pledge. Okay, so I don't have to turn off the Patreon notifications. One day it was like spamming me constantly. It kept re repeating the same thing over and over again. It was broken, so I just have a fear. But thank you so much. <laughs> oh, I hate you guys. All right. No, it's okay. All right, thank you. Uh, all right, so let's get down. Let's get this thing started. Uh, but for those curious, I already have... Uh, here we go. I already have the poll. I'm starting it over here. So I'll put it together at the end, and then you guys can go. I'll share the link, and then you guys can, like, vote on it. And where is the... So here's what we want. All right, so I'll post that link at the end of the stream. I'll drop it in the description, pin comment, share it on social media, whatever I got to do. So you guys can vote before we start the next stream. Then when we come back, we'll know what we're going with. So I'm excited to do this. Hopefully it works out. Uh, but we'll do it live. Okay. Uh... All right, so uh, as you read here, there is story to this. Uh, we're using the day one through three encounters as recommended through the Age of Tyranny. Age of Tyranny, for those who don't know, is a campaign expansion to the original Too Many Bones base set. But you can own Undertow and they do give you like epilogue cards for the campaign in there. And supposedly you can like mix and mash and make your own crazy campaigns with all the stuff you want to do. But in this one, 
Uh, I am using Age of Tyranny stuff, obviously. Brian pledged him. Guys, come on. I'm trying to get started here. Stop doing this. No, I'm just joking. Thank you so much. Wow. Brian, thank you. Adam, thank you. Corey, thank you. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, we do have a new goal. I don't know if you guys are doing this to try to get us to reach that goal. I posted a goal on Patreon. Uh, our game on our shelf of shame that's been there the longest since the first Gen Con I went to in 20, 2012 or 2013. I, I forget which year, but I remember going and I thought I was all cool. And I stayed around till Sunday in the last hour because I know at conventions, just in general conventions, not just board gaming, you can usually approach people's booths. Uh, at the end of the uh, con in the last hour and usually companies that ship stuff to a convention on trucks and stuff they have to pay for all that and they don't want to take as much as they brought to the convention home so they're usually willing to, to negotiate deals I find so if you stay at the last day of a, of a board game convention go to the dealer hall and start haggling like tell people like hey I'll buy that and I'll give you this much and they'll say go to hell or they'll say sure or they'll negotiate with you but I went to a booth that had War of the Ring, and it was a game I wanted very much, but I thought it might be too heavy, might not be for my game group, because uh, it's only two-player, really. But it was a game I got a wicked deal on. I remember walking up and just being like, I want that. I forget what it was. I probably said, like, $40, and it was there for, like, 70 or something. And the guy was like, mm, he thought for a second, and you could tell he didn't want to put that game back in a box and bring it back home. So he was like, sure. And I was like, yes. I'm like, deal. This made Gen Con worth it. Uh, so I got that game, I brought it home, I opened it, I looked at the rule book, and if you guys know the rule book for that game, it scared me. And I started reading it, I just fall asleep while I was reading it. I couldn't get through it, but the game pieces, I punched everything out, everything looked awesome. And I kept even buying every expansion they released at every Gen Con. I would go to that booth right away, I'd grab the expansion, bring it home, and I've yet to play that game ever. I'm yet to read through the whole rules, anything. And the game's kind of older, so there's not really many good how-to-play videos or anything like that. So it's, it's, a, it's a very... It's something I keep pulling out, reading, and then something else comes and I put it away. So War of the Ring is now a goal that if we hit that Patreon goal, uh, we will, Mel and I, will read the rules, learn the game, play it to practice, get it as down as best as possible. And yeah, that's, that's why I bought it. I started watching Ricky Royal's playthrough, actually. Uh, back when I first got into gaming, I found that and I was like, I love Lord of the Rings. So I started searching for Lord of the Rings board games, found his videos, and started watching them. And that made me want that game very much. Janet, thank you so much. You guys don't have to do this. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Did we hit the goal already? Did you guys just make it happen? I don't even know. <laughs> you guys are hijacking my stream here. I'm, I'm going to turn off alerts. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not because you guys are awesome. Oh, no. Okay. All right. So let me check the goal. I forget what I said. I think I did it at 250. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Two. Yeah, 250. So... If we hit that goal, we'll learn that game. We'll play War of the Ring. We'll do an epic long live stream. You guys can come and, and we can do some some trying to, you know, the some craziness. That game is huge. And we'll play Lord of the Rings from beginning to the end, the, the whole stream. Uh, and thank you, Janet. You're awesome. Ah, you guys are too much. Too much. I'm going to have trouble focusing all day. You guys are too good. Uh, too kind. Too nice. You have to stop. All right, so back to this. So I just want to show that goal. I've been getting harassed by my Patreons in our Discord about, you know, trying to build up our thing so I can do this full time going forward. So if you're interested in that, check out the Patreon. Links are in the description below. Uh, they're too awesome. Amazing community. Uh, the, yeah, like warm my heart. They warm, they warm my heart. All right, so I am going to go back to this. And esteemed subjects, you know, you already know why I've called you here mere days ago. We were each ripped from our homes, families torn asunder and scattered throughout this brutal land. The Ebon and their tyrannical leaders grow strong by the day. Stronger by the day. You glorious Gearlock, Gearlock Council, the bleh, your glorious Gearlock Council has chosen you to strike back and eradicate these foul miscreants using the cunning and ingenuity our superior race is known for. I, Nobulus Grint, shall oversee your progress personally. Prepare for departure. It's, Nob it's time to begin. Nobulus Grint. Okay. So in this campaign, I, I basically explained it already, so we don't really need to look at this. We'll get down to the table. Uh, but we're going to possibly play through seven episodes if we continue. So each time you win, it's each setting is a regular Too Many Bones session, sort of. There are modifications based on the campaign card you get. The first one is set. The first one is like number one. 
Uh, so we're forced to use this. So I'll read the story. It has a cool little story that goes with the whole like day one, two, and three encounters. And I made sure I'm playing with solo, uh, solo uh, encounters today, <laughs> not generic. <laughs> okay, so one, two, and three. So I'm not using the base game day one, two, and three. I took them out of the set. So we'll just pull from these and you get a new one each time because there's seven of each one. So the cool part is they included enough. So in a campaign, assuming you make it seven sessions, uh, you will see a new day one, two, and three each time you play. But these, I, you've been seeing me use these in our regular streams because I love the way these mix up the day one, two, and three encounters. Because that was kind of like the only real negative part of the base too many bones is like it's kind of boring doing that over and over again, the same day one, two, and three. Um, but yeah, and reading the same story over and over again, and usually just skip it after a while. Uh, but we'll build it out of this. But in the campaign, it will tell us a different day. So uh, let's say it's mole mesh we get. Uh, it could change these numbers. Uh, for the tyrant you're playing so it, it will change that up so you may play a tyrant like duster that you normally uh she is an eight uh, no no she's a 10 13 for her numbers we could get it so it's a uh six nine or or something like that an eight ten or whatever and it'll mess with it so this is definitely for those who've played too many bones a few times and you want to spice it up and you like campaigns to your game so i love this expansion this sold me on getting the game. If they didn't have a campaign expansion, I'm not sure I would have too many bones right now, to be honest, because I was looking at the time for a fantasy, uh, a little more complex rules, something with lots of replayability and had a campaign to it. And people told me, go check out too many bones. Uh, so I basically went to their booth and said, hey, show me your stuff. And that, that's why I have too many bones. But if they didn't have this expansion, uh, I don't think we would have even really looked into the game. But Undertow did have a built-in campaign at the time too. So other people were telling us to check out that uh, because it has, it has its own like kind of smaller, uh, quicker campaign in there. But this is like the full-blown turn too many bones core set into a campaign with boons and scars that you can carry forward. So boons, there's only like five. I've never really looked at these cards because uh, I don't think we really ran into them in the last playthrough. Maybe once, but I can't remember. Uh, but the scar deck, there are lots of scars you can get uh, throughout the playthrough. And these are disgusting. These will do things like stop you from being able to train and attack, let's say. And you put a little, little one of these little, uh, little translucent uh, scar things in here. You could have it so like maybe woven stare, a snare. I never get to use that again in, a play in the whole campaign. Uh, you could block off uh, paths like that. You could lose access, I think, to like your active slots and stuff like that. There is a bunch of crazy things that these do. You can also have to roll these dice. Uh, these are like negative dice that you have to like roll with you when you attack uh, or defend or whatever. And, roll, and it might take away bones, attack, or defense. Uh, you could get scars that force you to take this die and you roll it whenever you train. And uh, it messes with your training. I forget exactly how this one works, but if, if we get the card, it'll tell us and we'll deal with it. But yeah, these scars are like hilarious. They totally can make this, yeah, they make this go from like, yeah, put, this is like hardcore mode is how I'm going to look at it. And I'm not going to take the easy free health and stuff at the beginning. Uh, I don't know if I should for the first one just so we get to episode two or increase our odds to get to episode two. But I think I'll just play it normal and hopefully all goes well. I guess if I lost this first session, I would start over, I think, uh, with tomorrow, but we'll see. We will see, but I have this stream scheduled. Obviously you're here, uh, the second and the third already scheduled. So if you're curious, uh, they're in a playlist at the channel. They're also in our upcoming live stream section and you can set reminders. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, bye Adam. Uh, Adam's taking off. Go to watch this later, gotta go to work. Oh, come on, priorities Adam, priorities. <laughs> That's all good. Thank you though. Thank you so much for your support. <laughs> Guys are crazy. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba. It forces you to build your gear lock in different ways each time. This is correct, Sam. This is correct. My guess is if you lose three days, you are done. So no need for more boons. Yeah, so how it works is if you uh, keep going, these campaign cards could give you scars. They have, they have like, there's even ones that will give you two scars. And they just give you scars to start the next one. So we don't start with any scars here on the first one. There's even some that don't give you scars, which is nice. Um, but the way to get the boons uh, is if we have a party wipe. So if I lose a single day during an adventure, I get to draw a boon. Apply the effects of it, toss it away. And it may help remove scars. 
so that might be helpful if, if we start having trouble. But as you guys know, on a playthrough of too many bones, if like Bernard was saying, you lose a few times, uh, it could be all downhill from there. <laughs> Sam, Sam says, my work internet server just went down, so I have a lot of free time. <laughs> uh, no, you don't need to remove the base uh, day one, two, and threes. I just personally remove them because I don't want to see them in this series, and I like to show off that uh, chip theory included enough for each day so you don't see the same ones during a campaign which is kind of cool and then you get to see all the story that is actually like related there's like an actual story weaved in here uh, amongst the campaign cards the epilogue cards these day one two and three cards the scars and the boons uh, are kind of put together a cool little story uh, and it's neat but we are also playing with the 40 days in day lore uh, solo encounters mixed in here 40 days of day lore baddies are mixed in here and I'm forcing myself to use the 40 Days of Daylor. Uh, they give you new cards for your Tyrants. I have this here just to like sh keep track of who we've defeated. And I'm going to put the current campaign here. And whichever Tyrant we're facing, I'm going to put them up front. This is just a business card holder for those who are curious. Uh, and it perfectly has like eight slots. So this is awesome. But uh, who? Uh, Nom, for example, has a special in the 40 Days of Daylor expansion has a special Tyrant card. I'm using all the 40 Days cards instead of the base Tyrant card. So if you see something, you're like, wait, that's not how the Tyrant encounter goes for my copy of Too Many Bones. It's because I have the expansion 40 Days of Daylor stuff in there instead, uh, just to spice things up. Uh, so yeah. All right. Uh, so let's find out which Tyrant we're going to get. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, oh, I should read the front of the campaign. I know it's a random draw for the first one. So uh, let's see here. Campaign card one, Age of Tyranny. So fleeing the deep wood was a last resort. Now safe behind the walls of the human city, Obendar. Right here, right here. Uh, the, thing, or the thinning population of Gearlocks regroup. Seven tyrants have invaded North Datelor and are preparing to wipe the Gearlock race off the map for reasons that remain unknown. The council is seeing a small band of Gearlocks north, uh, sending a small band of Gearlocks north to eradicate the Ebon and their tyrant leaders one at a time. The council has added Duster, one of our own, to our tyrant list due to her declaration of war on the council itself. But just like the rest of the tyrants, her motivations remain hazy. Preparations have already begun, and it's nearly time to depart. So then we go to this back of this campaign card. So if on the second ones and beyond, we'll shuffle those into random, but you will get party rewards, you could. You will have a special campaign starter card. Uh, you could have that, you could have scars, you could be carrying over loot and training points. Uh, it'll tell you how to get your tyrants, either draw random or the player's pick, which you guys will be voting on which tyrant if it lets us choose uh, throughout this series. Also, the starting point uh, could change. You could be on a different day with a different amount of progress. But we're just starting on like normal, day one, zero progress points. But look, it's a six and nine for uh, progress points needed and days to complete it by. So that will already, that could mess with it, who we get first. Uh, but we are going to draw random. So I have them here in this little baggie, not included. Uh, to find out who we're going to fight in my <laughs> autofocus is going crazy here. Uh, okay, so I'll shake that up. Here we go. Our first tyrant. Hopefully, it's an easier one. <laughs> oh yeah, so Matt, uh, Sam, Sam posted perfect. Sam posted this the yeah. It's just a regular like uh, four tier business card holder. That's exactly what it is. Uh, if you're curious, you can find them on Amazon or at Staples or anything like that. Oh, <laughs> hold on, something's gonna. Happen. Okay. Oh no, we're fighting Nom first. Uh oh. <laughs> All right, it's Nom. Wow. Okay, so we're gonna put Nom up front here. Uh, interesting though. Nom is normally six and eight, so we got a little bit of a bump there because now we have till nine, uh, nine days to play with them. And they actually have you like put the tyrant card underneath here somehow. Uh, you're supposed to put it like down here to remind you like ignore these values and remember these ones. Uh, but we'll, we're not going to do that. We're okay. We'll just put this here. So we start on day one, uh, zero progress, and we have nine days, six progress points. And we have his epilogue. So these come in the Age of Tyranny, the epilogue. We'll read this if we beat him. And we could, based on party rewards on the next campaign, 
you could get the tyrant's die to use in future campaigns and this is like a sweet that they let you do this i think it's super fun and they actually work differently it's it's very neat uh boom so here's the tyrant encounter we need that so, so nom oh i have all the baddies out here you guys probably knew because we don't know what we're going to use uh so for nom we need these so nom says trolls as as species are not so smart nom the troll chieftain of shalefist region is no exception however no one has ever felt the need to point that out to Nom due to obvious reasons like size differentials and thunderclubs. It could also be because Nom loves to imprison those that anger him and then face off against his prey in a cage battle one by one. Okay. So we can go clubbing with Nom here. So when we get to Nom, if we get to Nom, battle queue baddie points, we don't have a battle queue. We just fight Nom one on one. So party of one ignores this. Uh, only one gear lock on battle mat at a time, which of course in solo, that's just going to happen. Gear locks will decide who enters first, second, whatever. Uh, this does not matter. Gear locks assume starting positions. When a gear lock is KO'd. Uh, yeah, that does, none of that matters. None of that matters for us. Okay. Tyrant skills, thick skin three, this jerk has. If only I had a way to penetrate thick skin. If only I had a way. What? Uh, so piercing arrow. Piercing arrow right here. I guess I could bring this up uh, nicer for you guys. Uh, where is it? Right here. Piercing arrow. Do number of damage to targets active defense only. This arrow also suspends thick skin for the turn. So maybe we can pair that together with like a nice shot on him and get through his thick skin and maybe take him out one shot. Maybe if we're lucky. Uh, so we'll try that. That's a die we're going to very much prioritize here in this playthrough. Uh, he has recover one. Nom gains one HP up to max at the start of his turn. So this, this sucks. Because he has thick skin, he's taking less damage, and even when you get through damage, this guy recovers. He, he is super annoying, this guy. Super annoying. Uh, let's find Nom right here. Uh, but he only has six health. But in my mind, he kind of has like six plus three, whatever plus three every turn, basically. So he's like really a nine health to start. If you can slam him through all in one shot, you have to get nine damage basically on him, plus whatever defense he has, if he has any. And if you don't, he just recovers and has thick skin again. So it's like, he get, basically gets like 4 HP added back after every hit. It's really annoying. Plus the defense he rolls. Like, I'm not even counting that. And this, is, this guy's crazy. It's like a wall here. Uh, but he'll be rolling only one attack die, his tyrant die, and one defense. And he can move diagonally, he's melee, and he's a troll. So he doesn't hit that hard, but let's check out his tyrant die. And he's going in shale fist. Uh, this tyrant die. You can see the thunder club right on there. <laughs> uh, his tyrant die. Uh, he has om nom, om nom nom nom. Uh, all defense dice are removed from target before applying damage. If he rolls that symbol, which is on only two sides, so that's the more rare thing to see. So that means thunder club. We'll see it four times out of six. After nom's attack, not target to the furthest position away from his current position on the battle mat and deal one true damage. So the annoying part of that is you have to waste decks to get back to Nom. So you want to roll all these dice to get through his thick skin, get through his defense, bypass his recovered health, but this guy will just knock you far away and you have to have a way to get across the map quickly uh, to get back to him. And, and it's, it's all annoying. It's super annoying. Uh, and because he's like usually a shorter play of only eight days you have, you don't get to build up a lot of stats. You have to be very selective in what you have going into that battle but because we're only fighting nom and he's only hitting us possibly one true damage and one attack die every turn uh health is like a priority defense maybe not so much because you're only worried about the one attack die hitting your defense uh yeah because yeah one attack die every round and there's no one else on the battle mat so as long as you can roll that defense, get it in there, uh, you'll prevent him from even hurting you, except for the true damage from his attack. But again, defense doesn't stop that, so you're going to hit that anyway. So bringing some health items in maybe might be enough and not really caring about defense. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, uh, one shy. No, I'm hey, two tyrants today. This will go fast. That is a good first day pick. Oh, good. <laughs> Phil's saying. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. I think it's good because, like, even this extra bonus on the campaign card, wherever I put it, 
Oh, right here. Uh, the campaign card. Uh, giving us that extra day, I think, is pretty nice. But there are there are other ones that could have made this like an 8-12 or something, I think. But then it might have started us on further days. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm a little worried, but not too much, really. Because uh, he, he only brings trolls, orcs, and, and scales. Uh, I'm a little worried with 40 days in Daylor orcs, but no beasts, no poison. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so let's get all these other guys out of here. So I'll throw our beasts off. We don't need uh, we don't need our bog type baddies. We'll throw them off, and we don't need. Oh yeah, we don't need goblins. That's another good one to get rid of, I think. Okay, those are out of the way. So here's our three tyrant types. All right, so let's set these up. Uh, I don't know. We'll just mess them up here. Okay, uh, five pointers. Oops. We need high DPS against Nom. Damage per second. Yeah, so yeah, if I can one shot them, that'd be great, but we'll see what happens. You could just get bad rolls, and you got to prepare for that. You got to be okay to get hit for a couple rounds. Uh, and maybe like an, a utility parts might be nice to get back uh, our, um, what was it, piercing arrow. Might be nice. Oh, and also, this is not really a ranged set, right? Uh, these guys aren't really known for all their range. I mean, there are some ranged uh, orcs we know about from last playthrough. There are a bunch of ranged scales. But other than that, things like return fire maybe aren't as high to worry about. Uh, but yeah, just some things to think about. If you guys have any thoughts either, like what, just start thinking like, this is, this is how I play every time. Like based on the tyrant I see, I, I out, now let's analyze the battle and then start thinking about like which, um, which, skills to prioritize or which stats and number one this is most important i think these are like icing on the cake but i think piercing arrow is like really key here and obviously rolling a ton of attack dice so dex attack and then we said health he's already starting at four but i still if i need to last the long battle from him recovering and having thick skin and that die fails me i need to have ways to deal with that so and we only have nine days Cut this. Okay. Gotta watch out for these raiding orcs. Uh, okay. So there's this tyrant die. No, I'm gonna throw his card here, so we know. Uh, we'll throw his. Uh, we gotta build this. Where's his epilogue right here? This epilogue there. Uh, so let's see. Uh, we are going to set up our encounters. Now that we know our progress and days required. Okay, so we need, uh, it's nine days according to this. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six. Throw the rest off to the side. Uh, we're going to throw this in there. And we're going to shuffle these up. And then we'll get our day one, two, and three. So where's my... Okay, I'm going to look away. Kind of shuffle it a bit without looking to know where the tyrant counter goes. Cover it up. And slap it in there. And then we'll find our day one. Uh, day one. Okay. Uh, day two. Actually, we'll do three first. Uh, let's see. Bernardo says, Rob, question. Do promos for too, too many bones worth it? Um, nowadays, on the mind that they don't add, even even they dilute the game experience. Uh, yeah. It, they're more fun to add, but yeah, they, they kind of mess with things. Uh, what other game is like that? Where adding the promos in really throws off. It reminds me of like, uh, zombicide or, or basically any cool mini or not uh, stretch goals or like add-ons and stuff usually a lot of those characters like really overpowered and like throw the game off uh, I find uh, so it's kind of like that like you don't need them it's definitely not balanced for it they definitely throw it out of whack 
but part of that it may be fun for people uh, to play it on like the hardest mode and then throw in some of those promos to help mix it up and maybe throw it in their favor. Um, but yeah, there is one promo that I've still yet to use. And I'll just, uh, somebody tried to spoil it in the comments the other day and I had to delete it. And I'm sorry if you're watching and you're like, why did you delete my comment? Uh, yeah, because you spoiled. So there's this one, uh, for those that know, uh, I want to play with this on stream, but I, I don't think I can make it like a public stream. I think, I think I would do like a private stream just with the Patreons and like warn that it's like spoilery how this, how you can get this. Uh, but this one adds like a whole new game mode and uh, it's kind of neat and uh, I want to try it one time. Um, but yeah, there are some that are cool and they add. Um, yeah, I can't spoil some of the promos, but there are some that actually add to the game uh, in a good way. Uh, I'm going to play on normal level. <laughs> Janet, no, she just got that one. Yeah. I was surprised. I, I didn't, I assumed it w was going to work. There wasn't, I didn't know it was going to work the way it did. And it's crazy. They put that much effort into uh, an, a promo. I, I thought it's awesome, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'll, I'll just leave that where it is. That's your little, your little tease for today. Uh, but I can't go into much about the promos uh, because a lot of them are, there's secret ways to get them. And they kind of, chip theory is kind of like, don't really tell people how to get them, but people will help you. If you go to Board Game Geek, some people I've seen are pretty nice and will private message and help people get started and try not to like spoil it, but give people hints and nudge them. Uh, so we'll use this one. And yeah, that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> but I was joking about the 40 point one before, pretending like it wasn't a thing, and it was sitting off to the side, and somebody left in the comments basically saying like, Oh, Rob, this is how you get it, and this is this and that, and, and just, like basically posted like huge spoilers about it, and I was just like, oh, delete. <laughs> I didn't even want to reply, I just like had to delete it, because if I replied, it would leave the comment there, so. Uh, but yeah, don't spoil it in the chat, please, anyone that knows. Uh, yeah, keep it to yourself, and uh, yeah. <laughs> but you'll see Chip Theory, they're posting about the current... Splice and Dice has a way to get promos, and you can see them posting on social media, kind of like teasing people, uh, pretending like they don't know what's going on. It's kind of funny. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, so this is day one. We got day one. Let's pull this in. We don't need that much room. We can pull this in. We only need like two cards wide, right? Okay. Uh, okay, day one. Anything else? I got my four health. I'm going to play on, on whatever it's called, Legendary Adventurer, uh, whatever the regular mode is. So for those that are curious, uh, so this may make it not as long as a playthrough like we played last time. We played on Heroic uh, when we played Age of Tyranny, but I find Too Many Bones is easier at more players. So we probably would have been good not even using this at all, playing three players, uh, but I'm going to play this uh, in this playthrough. So no candy coated gear locks. No training freebies. Too many bones straight up. We're ready for the true challenge. Dun, dun, dun. But to be honest, I am playing on an easier mode because I have all of you here who are going to beat me up in the chat, I'm sure, when I go to do something silly. Uh, but maybe not. We'll see. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're, we're not truly playing solo. We're playing like 20 people running Gilly here is, is the plan. Uh, all right. So we got the Spoonie Bod. The mood prior to venting out on a journey to take down the ruthless overlord is always somber. This guy's singing is not helping. The line of twixt life and death. Too far o'er did we step. Daylor's soul refused to take. Those awful deeds done at the break. <gasps> His name is Edward. And he says he didn't write that tune. It's a work of another musician who's been hanging around town. Heard she's in jail. But hard to tell. Uh, no, here come the guards. So, we have a couple peaceful choices here as it's day one. We can turn in Edward for singing or for spreading propaganda. The guards could thank us for escorting uh, and es oh, thank you by escorting us safely out of the city. You may choose to skip your next encounter. Oh, this is neat. And claim encounter success. 
Take these rewards instead. A progress point and two training points. Uh, that is probably really good. Because you get a, you get double loot here, a training point, and then you get to skip the next day. Wow. I feel like I've never read this one, but I probably have. Uh, I don't see it too often. Explain, the gu explain to the guards that Edward was simply sharing an example of illegal lyrics, you know, so that you wouldn't accidentally start singing them yourself or something. Edward thanks you and offers you a secret tune. Treat this card as loot. Ancient melody. Before the start of any non-tyrant battle, party gain surprise, single use. That's also very nice. That's also very nice. Because you could choose the harder option on a battle card and then pick surprise could totally turn the battle like way in your advantage. So what do you guys think? What are your thoughts there? I'm like totally hardcore down for number one. Draw two loot. Could possibly get some loot to help us um, get some healing stuff, which would be great. Uh, so yeah, option two. Oh, Sam, really? But I do like the surprise in a battle. Oh, Gilly is faster. Yeah, he is. That's correct. Thank you for reminding me. I usually look at that before I play, so I kind of have an idea. So yeah, he does have a six, two fives, two fours, and a three. And and we're playing against trolls and orcs. Uh, he definitely should have a pretty good time uh, being higher on the initiative meter. Thank, that's a good point. I love it, Corey. I love it. All right, Janice says one one. Layla, it's a cobra. Snitches get stitches. This is true, Matt. Matt, you speak the truth. Good thing no one's watching me snitch here. Oh, wait. Never mind. Cameras are on. Oh, no. Option one strikes me as the Molnor deal. It, it does. It feels guilty, but I don't see anything here. I don't see anything here saying we're going to, like, throw an encounter in the deck or anything like that to possibly punish us later. It does seem, like, just as good as it says. I don't see why skipping it. I don't know what the next day would give us, but I'm assuming we don't have to fight because usually day two is a fight. So now we don't have to fight, and that fight, we could end up picking the easier option on the fight, which probably wouldn't, but it could only give us like one training point and a loot maybe, uh, but this gives us two training points, and we still get the progress. It, it's risky, but it does. this does give us an extra loot. This does give us an extra loot and two training points. I think a loot and two training points is very good, and I want to take it. An option to option. Um, the only thing is, this is like a one-time battle, but the loot I take here is also one time. But these training points are forever. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm going to go with option one because I see more ones there in there. But option two is is definitely valid. And I'm all for the surprise. But yes, I'd be more for the surprise if I wasn't playing a gear lock that has a super high initiative die. Plus the bottom loot and training points and progress. Yeah, plus I get all this. This is crazy. This is crazy. All right. So let's take our two loot. Oh, I need to shuffle this, actually. I did not shuffle the loot today while setting up yet. It's too busy playing around with uh, Google Forms or whatever. Um... And YouTube telling me that the streaming wasn't available for the first five minutes while I was trying to click live. Uh, but we're here. We got out on time. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Plus the innate allows me to throw fast guys to the curb. This is true. All true things. I haven't played Gilly in a while, and it might take me... That's what I like about the campaign play. Hopefully this first campaign will get me warmed up on Gilly again, and we'll get back into it. But uh, I did not do, like, usually what I do with Too Many Bones. I'll do, like, a little practice playthrough the day before, so I kind of, like, you know, get a taste of the gear lock again, so I at least know the gear lock's abilities and remember how they work and that kind of stuff. Um, but, yeah, I figure we're playing a campaign, so I, ha I have time, I hope, uh, to get used to it. Okay, done. Uh, loot. One. What do we get? Skinning knife. That's fun. That's fun when we only have three types of baddies to play with. So how skinning knife works, three uses. 
Uh, before drawing your next encounter, place a defeated baddie from your most recent battle onto this card. Any baddies of that type in your next battle are surprised. Tried to skin Golem, got Clay Pot. Adamo the tyrann Tyrannical Yeti. So I could, if I beat uh, Scales type uh, on the last battle, I can take it, put it on this card, tilt it for whatever uses I have left on it. Uh, then in the next battle, th all those guys go below me. So if for some reason I get some ranged Scales that are above me on the initiative meter, I get to put them down below uh, me. So I get surprised over them. So it's like I, I have the scalp of one of their type and I'm kind of showing them who's boss. Uh, very cool, very cool loot. Next, Red Minotaur. This one I don't see very often. Uh, ignore bones and making a training attempt. That could be helpful in the early going. Single use. <laughs> no wings. Plenty of bull. <laughs> red Minotaur. I get it now. I never even realized that's a Red Bull themed uh, loot. <laughs> Oh, hey, Edgar. Edgar's here. There is May 13th. CGG tweeted something showing weird 40-point baddie. Yeah, see? They're teasing it. They know. That's why I'm not afraid to show it off now, because they've already shown. I'll just show the back of the chip, but I will not say any more about it. But I may schedule a private stream where Mel and I or Justin or whoever will play with that 40-point baddie using the custom game mode uh, on a private stream. So, yeah, I'll, I'll think about how we're going to do that in the future, but stay tuned. <laughs> Something I've been thinking of. Hello, Matouj. Hello. Yes. Too Many Bones is full of tongue-in-cheek references. I agree. Tons of them. And I love it. And I don't always catch them right away. Uh, but sometimes I'll get them later. I'm not, I'm not the quickest uh, the quickest gear lock in the forest. That's for sure. All right. Uh, let's see here. So we got our loot. Uh, we get two progress points. Boom, boom. Okay. And we get three training points total. Three training points total. So how are we going to spend said training points? That is the question. So what does the newbie guide on the reference sheet recommend for Gilly? Gilly needs at least one defense to start off with. Well, why didn't they print it on the sheet? That's what on the mat. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, get HP up to five or six and switch to decks so he can keep up with his companion maintenance. Attack is then his focus, especially for longer adventures. Skills. Grab a companion unless there is a full party. Also, Woven Snare is a nice trap debuff. Then, pursue Marked Enemy for big damage that will aid Gilly and his allies. If he goes heavy on traps, make sure to pick up Brute Buster for more control over triggering them. Hmm. 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 Okay. Uh-huh. So, I mean, a defense is not a bad idea. I said I wanted to get it, but... But... He has a three decks already. The arrows. It's the arrows that I don't know. Like, we have to take the multi-arrow first to get that line going. We know we want piercing arrow. We know there's thick skin already in these guys. Uh, so we have them here. Multi-arrow. That's the one that allows you to uh, hit two targets, I think, right? Number of your roll attack dice also hit a second baddie of your choice. So if you got a two, the best result there, and you rolled like three attack dice, you can pick two of them to also apply their damage to somebody else, which is awesome. Uh, so that's not a bad one to get going, because I'm assuming we'll see multiple enemies going forward, because we're already going to be skipping day two. Um... Oh, I don't know if we get all this now. You may choose to skip your next encounter and claim encounter success. Take these rewards instead. Eh, we'll just do it all now. Whatever. Um, or there's the whole piercing arrow. I don't think we'll prioritize return fire. So we could start on either one. They have the star to start. Uh, if you guys can see. Oh, it's not an arrow. Multi-arrow is also very good. The Wolverine, that's not a bad early game one. <laughs> yep. Marked Enemy for Nom. That's a good one to work towards. Yes. So I do want Marked Enemy for Nom. So I feel like multi-arrow we need to go for. I feel like we should put something in our regular stats, though. Let's think here. Let's look at the map. Let's think. Let's, let's look at the map. 
Okay. So we got to keep our decks in line. Uh, Health-wise, I might take a health here to start. So I'm thinking health. I'm thinking attack and multi-arrow to start. Just because the Wolverine is great for keeping Gilly alive, but again, if I'm lower on the initiative meter, for some reason it, it could fail me, and I'm below a few enemies, uh, my Yeti, little Yeti Wolverine, Wolverine is not helping me if I only have four health and the enemies are able to snipe me and kill me before I even get my turn to roll my uh, companion, who a, may not even hit. I have very little faith in the companions, uh, especially the tiger who like to roll misses when I need them most. So I need reliable survivability. And the Wolverine uh, has two misses. So this little guy, you might not even get him out turn one to help keep you alive. So the only more consistent way to stay alive is either defense, but even better than that, I think, is health. I don't know about defense yet, but I could be convinced on that also. I feel like all the training points I want to put here, I, I don't even feel like a skill yet. I don't even feel like a skill yet. So how I feel is uh, health for one. And then I would do uh, defense. I don't roll for it because it's a zero. So I could get that. And then I would possibly uh, go for an attack or another health. But I think attack. I think I want attack. But again, then my dex is out of whack where I can't even roll all my attack on the same turn. And because I'm at three decks and already have three dice here, I would probably just want to put it in health. But I could put it in decks just for like movement purposes uh, to run around the board and kind of kite. HP and attack. Yeah. Health, multi-arrow and attack. Yeah. I, I think that's a great, great option. Yeah, I, I, the defense I was just showing that they do recommend it, um, but it, it does, like, I only have three decks, so uh, a multi-arrow instead of defense is totally fine. It keeps me offensive, uh, but it is only you roll it once, and then after that, my decks is kind of going to waste. And I don't think I will one-shot, but let's do it. Let's do what's recommended here. You guys are recommending health, attack, so let's roll for our attack. Actually... Let's pretend we didn't take these yet and use our first training point on attack for two dice. Uh, we failed, but uh, we'll hold this. We can hold this. Uh, so we'll spend that one on health, which I already put the chip under. He's at five. The second training point we'll try on attack. No, Sacabra, even though you've never played, hey, you've watched enough that you could totally chime in. I'm, I'm down for everyone's input. I'm down for everyone's input. Let's play together. Let's have some fun. It's all good. Yeah, chime in. This helps you learn the game, right? Put in your recommendations. If we go with them, see how it turns out, you learn, right? It's it's part of the fun of this game is experimenting, uh, which is very fun. Even if you lose, like you learn something every playthrough. Um, okay. Uh, so we got it. Uh, so we need another die here. So attack. And then... This is where the problem is. So multi-arrow, we get it. We can use it on the first one. But now we're just a little bit... We're, our next point is dexterity for sure. Because then we can start off the map battle by rolling that. So we'll see. Okay. So we'll go with that. So health, attack, and multi-arrow. As recommended by the chat. Most of the chat. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that is all I think, right? We got our two progress. We got our two training points plus a third. We got our two loot. And that was an exciting day one. Wow. Uh, I need to discard these and not use them again for the playthrough. Uh, so, we go on to day three, technically. Uh, I'm going to, in the recovery phase, uh, just do his scouting thing. I might look for better loot, actually, with this. So, for his innate, uh, where is it? Before battle, reveal a baddie. Oh, that's not even in this point. That's like before a battle. So before we even set it up. Okay, so I can use that later. So I could scout now, but I don't think we're going to do that. I think we might look for better loot. We don't need to heal. And I don't think I'm going to scout. 
Uh, yeah, we don't need to heal. Search for better loot. Scout the area. We don't have any locks to pick, so... Yeah, I think I'm going to toss Red Minotaur. And we're going to look for better loot. Six stack dice. So this goes away no matter what. I'm getting a little greedy. I want to find some health. Or something defensive. Imagine we found like Raider Armor or, or uh, that shield one. Uh, the Buckler. Ah, uh, the Nerf Trap. Yes, I like the Nerf Trap. We'll, we'll get we'll get Woven Snare going. Uh, we'll get some traps going hopefully in this campaign. Uh, we might even get them going in this play. We'll see. It's just a shorter one. So I don't know if I want to risk it on a trap, which traps, I felt like I've needed them for some battles. And then I roll them and I get the red bone. Or I need I don't really need them for battles. I roll them for fun and then they don't really do much. Uh, they're kind of like, uh, the stuff that's like not for sure, uh, just from failing me in the past on random dice rolls, I've kind of like devalued. But don't get me wrong, they are still good. Uh, so I don't get any new loot. There's no bones. <laughs> I got greedy and it didn't pay off. That is okay. All right. Uh, so we're going on to day three. Mm -hmm. Hey, T-Man. Yes, we're going for Nom. <laughs> yep. Oh. Okay, uh, so we skip the next day. So I'm going to discard this one. Um, I'm going to throw this to my discard pile so we will not see it in the rest of the campaign. I don't know what it is, but we're not going to see it because we chose to skip it. <laughs> Corey's correct. If they let, let us roll traps and pets for new loot, I, I would definitely roll six bones. I would, I would have all the loot, all the loot to choose from. So we're bridging the Cibron. Cibron crossing is a bridge of numerous conflicts. It is not uncommon for the trade thoroughfare to be out for weeks at a time. There are often attacks during reconstruction. Adolescent orcs, trolls, and trolls love burning nearly completed bridges for sport. Novice kobolds and bog creatures love using workers as target practice. Needless to say, the bridge is out. But there seems to be plenty of enemy minions just standing about. And a bridge is the quickest way across. Uh, we had this one the other day in our playthrough. Uh, so, what we need to do here... Do baddies float? Let's find out. So with some combat, battle queue is endless, one point baddies. Only number of baddies equal to party size are allowed on the mat at a time. When they're defeated during the battle, they are flipped face down on the position where they were defeated. Other units can still occupy that position, so the bad guys and me can walk on their dead bodies. Uh, on their turn, Gearlocks may spend one dex to move a single adjacent defeated baddie to an avail av available adjacent uh, position to themselves. Uh, success is achieved as soon as all four positions in a single lane of battle are filled with defeated baddies. We like barely did this one last time. But two training points and a loot. I am so down. Hopefully we can do this and I don't mess it up. Okay, so we're just going to draw from here over and over again. Oh, I get to scout. I'm going to scout. Uh, I'll scout a one just to see uh, before battle. Um, do I care? It might be hard to take this guy out very quickly, though. And I need to be fast in this one. I think. I think there was like a speed aspect to it of trying to lay them all down. But only one can be on the mat at a time. But I just get worried hitting fatigues if I'm too slow. Uh, he's a fine enemy, though. I don't know. He's a fine enemy normally. But I, I don't think I can one-shot this guy. But there are guys in there I know I can. Or at least have a better chance. But he's not an orc. He is not an orc. I'll keep him on the front. I'll keep him on the front. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to keep him. A good call, John. I figured you'd say that. I figured you'd say that. You could get all twos if you pretend to attack. Better than Hardy. Yeah, that's true, actually. That is true. Yes, better than Hardy. There are Hardy guys in that level one. Let's still probably see some. Okay. Uh, so... One, two, three. This guy's going to go in lane one. And he's going at two. I will start way... Oh, that's the problem. I got to start kind of near them, right? So I can move them. I got to start kind of near them. But then again, they will come to me. And I could like try to do lane two as my row. 
Yeah, I still think I start far away. And this guy can't get to me first. Yeah, that's probably the best way to do it. Just make it here. <laughs> Matt, funny guy. He likes the heart hardy boys, I'm assuming you're talking about. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. So, <laughs> start near? John, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like they'll just come. Oh, I'm going to start before him, though. That's what you're saying? I don't think I'll take him out, though. I'll take him out when he comes close. Because I need to hit for four. I'm rolling three attack dice. I mean, it's possible. Uh, whoops. Three attack dice. multi arrows useless here. Bad pick, everybody. Bad pick. <laughs> just kidding all right so we don't need to roll multi arrow so this extra dex is like not going to waste really uh or we're not we don't have more decks than we need all right let's do it five all right we're definitely going before this guy okay so if i start you're saying start here but then he gets to hit me I don't want him to hit me. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna do it here. I, I know it's probably not right. I feel like I should be up closer, but we're going to do it here. All right, let's do it. I hit him for three. So thick skin. He loses two, still has one health. His turn. We'll have him move here. And he doesn't attack. Okay, round two. I'll roll three attack dice. And I get a bone. And we take him out. So he is face down here, floating. So we're going to try here, but we can move them around as needed. Um, yes, so that goes out. Uh, next baddie, uh, coming in at the end of the round. What are we trying to get here, bone-wise? Let's take our backup plant. Yeah, I do have low deck, so moving around is kind of annoying. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Uh, so we could try to get up to this, deal in five damage. We can remove a five-point battery or less from the battle mat if we're having trouble. But uh, Fortune Discovery, built in at three, is pretty nice. And we could get extra mech leg that can help us get to our Nate plus one or get more bones firing off that extra damage. We can mess with the bad EQ number of battle points. And we can help re-roll or set our pet dies uh, depending on what we get there. Uh, so our next one is an Orc Peon. So it's a good thing the Orcs together, I, I wasn't even thinking. They're, they don't even come in together on the battle mat anyway in this, in this scenario. So we don't have to worry about that messing with us. So it's actually very good. So this guy is a melee also. And he's going to go to the bottom of the queue. Round three. Gilly. He has rage one. So if he's lower health, he'll be rolling more attack dice. So I will just fire on him. No training point from the start. Nope. Nope, nope. I, I'm playing hardcore mode. Or whatever. Legendary. Legendary mode. Wow, we rolled five. Blow him off the map. He's going to flop right there. We're seeing Gilly already in action. Wreck and shop here. Uh, okay. So end of the round, we get a new baddie. The endless Q here. Week in one. Oh, here we go. This guy's got pretty good offensive power. But again... He's coming in at the bottom, two health. He's ranged, position one. Gilly's gonna show him how range works. Uh, round four? Yeah, round four, right? It took two to take out this guy. Yeah, round four. If we can lay him right there, that'd be perfect. And then if the next guy comes in here in lane two, we might have to m kill him, but then we can move up and move the body. <laughs> that sounds very wrong. <laughs> uh, we got four and a bone. Four and a bone. OK. 
Okay, so we definitely take this guy out. Yeah, nothing stopping that. He goes there. Uh, I've never had this scenario go this smooth uh, so far, but we'll see. Yeah, the fatigue rounds is what I'm afraid of. That's why I'm afraid to get hit. I don't mind taking some decks in a turn. Oh, we have another orc peon showing up. He said, hey, you, you killed my brother. You killed my brother. I will get you. His twin brother. Where is he? Right here. They're identical. Identical twins. I can tell. <laughs> uh, he wants to go in melee position one, uh, which he's allowed in, right? Because I don't think it's technically occupied. It says something like, does it say they can just move on it or they can occupy it? So yeah, he can start there. He can start there. I would take that as he can start. Uh, all right. Round five. Oops. Flip too many times. Uh, round five. Gilly. I'm going to... How's the best way to do this? Because I, I can only move him from a position I'm adjacent to to another position. So if he dies here, I would have to waste three decks to get up to this guy and like move him to a weird position. Then one, two, like I don't even know how that would work. Right? Because it's like on their turn, Gearlocks may spend one dex to move a single adjacent defeated baddie to an available position also adjacent to the gear lock. So I need him to move. I need him to, I want to get him here. So I, I kind of have to just move in to let him come to me, right? And then just slug it out with him. So one, two decks to move here. Uh, and I don't want him to die. I, I can only roll one die, which is kind of perfect, right? So he, even if I hit him for two, he doesn't die. But then he has rage rolling two dice. And he, well, he can't, can't take me out. I'm at five health. So even rolling two dice, we should be okay. So that should, this should work. Let's see what you guys are saying. Good to get orcs early. Yeah, it's good to get the orcs together early. Yes, so they're not adding to the other five-pointer orcs for that raiding ability. Uh, move up, but don't attack and let him move down. I'm still going to attack. Right? I have one, two, yeah, I have one more dex. I'm just going to try to hit him a little bit. But I, I could not attack so that he doesn't roll extra dice. Yeah, it's probably a smarter play. So he only rolls one die on me right now. And then I just roll three on him next turn and hopefully take him out. Yeah, that's next level play, yeah, Janet. Next level play. <laughs> I like it. Okay, so I'm going to stand here and go, oh, I can't find my arrows. <laughs> Don't hurt me, orc. Uh, he's going to come down here. And he's not raging because I didn't hit him. Don't forget fatigue's coming. Uh, is it? Oh, is it in a new round? No, no. This guy just came out on five, right? Yeah, he just came out on five. Fatigue is coming. No attack. Okay, he moves down on his turn. And he hits me for one. Ouch. Now we hit fatigue rounds. Start of the round. Yeah, he gets some damage anyway. And that's why I had to be careful. Yeah, you're right. If he rolled two attack dice on me and he got me down to one... I'd be done. That is a huge, could have been a huge mistake. Uh, so now it's my turn. I have three health. He is sitting at two. I'm going to roll three attack dice. Do any of my bones help me out right now? Nope. Nope. Uh, switch targets, split targets. Yeah, none of that works in this situation. All right, so we rolled three and a bone. We're going to use a fortune discovery. Before I apply my attack dice, I'm going to spend these three. And I'm going to take a consumable die. What is this an 8 plus 1? Is it really good to go for? Before battle, reveal up to two baddies in their active slot, slots. Gilly may cycle them to the bottom of their stacks. Mm. I could take uh, the extra mech leg or whatever it's called to try to get more bones. Uh, to try to hit my innate faster earlier in the scenario. But I don't know if I need it really. But it would help filter out orcs to make sure they don't happen together. But uh, my favorite die of Gilly's consumables is this one right here, where I can mess with the battle queue by increasing it by one or two or reducing it, depending on how I want to play with the numbers to help get the right amount of baddies in a scenario that may be worse or uh, another way. The innate plus one carries on in the campaign, does it? Oh, 
That I didn't know. I forgot about that. I think you're right. Yeah, I think it does carry forward. Battle queue changer's best, but I don't think I need it right now. I am going to go for the bones end. Because if I do get to flip my chip uh, to my an 8 plus 1 side with the stars there, uh, that will be helpful through the whole campaign. Ah, perfect. I forgot about that being a thing. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. Uh, so we'll take this uh, extra mech leg and we'll try to use that in the right situation to try to get our innate going. I think that's what we'll try to do here. Uh, so these three attack dice I'm going to apply to this guy for sure. Wipe him out. Done. And done. Uh, so he would just die right there. And boom, we get our bridge. Success is achieved as soon as all four positions of a single lane of the battle mat are filled with defeated baddies. Did it! Boom! Thank you for the help. Alright, so we got four baddies already in our defeated pile. Uh, oh, let's use skinning knife. I'm going to use skinning knife on a, a uh, scales baddie. So that way we can get over top of these guys that have dirty ranged effects. Uh, like they usually have high initiative and, um, they're ranged, I find, but we'll see how that works out. We may not even get any of those guys in the next one. Okay. So a loot, fortunate discovery. Okay. So we can select one of our consumable dice, place it in a spot on your mat. It's now available for use. Ah, Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Uh, we get a progress. So we have one, two, three progress now out of the six we need. And we get two training points. So I want to go for a dex. That's a for sure. And a defense or a health? I think a dex and a health or a dex and a defense. I feel like defense would have been nice uh, to help me get some bones going with this die. So for backup plan purposes, I feel like a defense rolling bones over and over again might be very nice or just help keep me alive a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Dex and defense. Yep, I'm down. Great minds. Great minds think alike. <laughs> okay, so I'll just take a dex. And the defense, we just get it because we don't roll because we have zero to roll. So this, this is feeling better here. I just feel like the health needs to be increased, but we can work on that. <coughs> the double D. <laughs> Excuse me. I need to take a drink. I have a tickle. Oh, that feels good. Okay. Um, that's it. That's it. So this is discarded. We won't see that again during the campaign. Uh, so these are gone. We go home. We have three health. This guy's gone. We go back. This resets to one. All right. Recovery. We're healing. Back up to five. Boom. Um, that is that. Day four. Here we go. What do we get? Daylorian Health Share Program. This is new. These creatures are linked, literally. Long cable runs from a band atop each of their heads, connected to the band on the creature behind it. The poor sap in the back is pulling a cart with what looks like gearlock technology atop a console into which all the cabling feeds. A light on the device blinks green, and the creatures are jolted with electric current. The leader, strong and fierce, suddenly looks barely able to go on, while the runt in charge of the cart now looks refreshed. While the purpose for such a machine eludes me, maybe I can use its effects to my advantage. <laughs> what the heck is this? So we could both battles, but we could cut the cable. Battle queue baddie points, add two one-point baddies. So we're on day four, so we would get six one-pointers. After first four baddies are placed on the battle mat, you may redistribute their HP however you like. Each baddie must have at least one HP. Or the option that's probably harder because we could get an extra loot out of it. Give the cable give the give cable the green light. Battle queue baddie points add a one point baddie to the top of the queue. So this would only be five one pointers. 
At the beginning of each of your turns, you must swap the health of any two baddies on the battle mat, player's choice. How come I feel like the second option is easier? Am I missing something? But the, the second option has this bonus loot, which is throwing me off. Usually it's like going to be the harder option. What are you guys thinking? Um, I feel like... Uh, am I missing something here? Battle queue baddie points add two one-point baddies. Battle queue baddie points add a one point baddie to the top of the battle queue. I guess the other one is easier because you're swapping all the HP around so you can put it all under like an easy guy. So it makes the harder guys really easy. And then the other option though, at the beginning of each of your turns, you must swap the health of any two baddies on the battle mat. So that could, could really mess with you, right? T-Man says, I have to have this gear lock. He is awesome. Gilly is awesome. He is super fun. Super fun. Great expansion. Uh, oh, Sakabra's so up with five. Up, up since five with a sick kid. Oh, need a dark roast. <laughs> double, double. Oh, the double D, yeah. And some muffins for us all this morning. Oh, that's rough. <laughs> oh, dark roast. Mm. Uh, Multi-arrow and the first option would allow you to take out two baddies in one shot. Yeah, with this first option, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I would just put two down to one point and then split it. Yeah, that's the thing. Two extra baddies there. I'm going to go for the second one, I think. I want the extra loot. I want the extra loot. Because, again, if we find something awesome like radar armor or something like that, we possibly can keep carrying it forward unless we're limited to only taking two training points. And if something is heavy, it's worth three. And we might not be, or two uh, loot points, sorry, two loot points. Uh, and we might not be able to carry it forward. But it would be nice to try. We might be able to carry it. Option two. All right, we're going with option two. So battle, uh, before the battle, I get to scout. Uh, since it's all one-pointers, I'm going to look. Add a one-pointer. Oh, look what we get again. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this guy. I'm gonna keep this guy. So one, two, three, four, because we're on day four, so that's our battle queue baddie points. And then we add a one point to the top of the queue. Okay. All right. Uh, so, anything else? Um, okay, let's just fill it up. I'm always like worried that like when I start playing a new gear lock, like to remember before battle and start a battle stuff, I always forget. And those windows are very important uh, to do them in the correct window. So the first one we get is Thick Skin and Careless, another Troll Brute. Or actually, our first Troll Brute. Three health. Going to lane one melee. He's got Careless, rules an attack and a defense. So he's better odds of hitting his Careless than the uh, Troll Rompers do. Then we get that Troll Romper. Also three health. I have a feeling our Skinning Knife might not really come into play here. But maybe. We have three more enemies. And, oh, here we go, a raiding orc. Hopefully we don't see too many other orcs with this guy. So raiding will give him an extra attack for every other orc on the battle mat. That is my understanding. He's ranged, actually. Uh, i got to put these guys in the proper order here. I forget this sometimes. The two goes here. Yellow has a four. All right. Oh, another troll. Tipsy Troll. He's got Recover 1 and Careless. Well, I want to attack. So he's there drinking from his mug of ale. Three health. So it's a troll troll fight here, it looks like. Uh, this goes to two. And he's also melee. Everyone look good. Everyone in the right spots. Sometimes I mess that up. Uh, yep, I did. This guy goes here. I knew. I have to double check myself. Because I get excited and I just keep going. All right. Uh, battle queue. All right. So, hmm. Hmm. So they all only roll one attack. 
and I have to swap health at the beginning of each of my turns. And how I'm going to remember this, I get to go four, so I get to go first. Uh, I'm going to stick this in here to remind myself. Uh, I'm going to put the D6 in there, so hopefully that reminds me to, hey, why is that there? And I look over here uh, and then do the swapping of health. So the skinning knife not really coming into play yet, and it won't come into play at all because even this one pointer is going to the bottom of the queue, so that's kind of sad. So we'll just put that there. I should save that for later. Okay. Uh, so in this case, I don't really want to get trapped. So I'm going to go down here. So swapping the health wouldn't matter here in the first turn because they literally all have three health. So we're going to ignore that. We're going to ignore that. Hello, 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 Sajat. All right. Uh, okay. We have four decks, so we can now roll defense, or we can roll multi-arrow to get us started. We'll only get hit from this guy and this guy. That's two to start. I kind of want to... I still kind of want to roll a defense in here. But multi-arrow is probably the better call, because if I get lucky... I could take out two. The only problem is these two thick skin guys over here, I won't get to take out unless I rolled two twos with the multi-arrow and I'm able to apply two of the dice, which you know this all won't work out, but if it did, I could snipe like this guy and then one of these guys or both these guys. Multi-arrow, yeah, go offensive. Yeah, because I technically could take out this guy that could hit me. So I'll, um, but I probably won't. Should I just to target this guy? I think I'll target this guy. Yeah, I'll target this guy. Maybe I take him out and then this guy, maybe I damage him slightly and then he rolls careless. I don't know. Charge. All right, here we go. So I did hit for three uh, and multi arrow. Thanks a lot, Sam. Uh, is a piece of junk. <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, all right, so we hit this guy for three. We wipe him out. Really wish I had a defense right now. <laughs> just joking. <laughs> so we take that guy out. Uh, this is a bone, and I do not want to apply such a bone. And I don't want to switch my targets or anything. <laughs> Wound thick skin. Uh, okay. So this one is out. So now we'll go to the purple guy. Can we do it? So he blocks one, two. Okay. No dice to roll. Green. One, two. No dice to roll. And the blue guy. One, two. Uh, and he's going to roll an attack and a defense against me. And he misses on the attack. All right, I'm not mad at you anymore, Sam. All worked out. Uh, and because of this bone, he hits himself for careless. And he gets two defense, though. Uh, that's a little sucky. End of the round. Oh, wow. Another troll. So all the trolls are getting used up here nice and early. So we're going to get a whole bunch of scales and orcs later in the playthrough here. Uh-huh. Bottom of the queue, round two, start of my turn, I get to swap the health of two units. I have to, I must. I don't see a point really. Uh, let me just swap two of the three pointers. I, I don't know, There's. I don't see really a, I don't really want to give the two health on this guy to a guy who could recover. And the other two guys are just thick skin and careless also. This guy's the same guy, so. Oh, I do see a point. I could take out one of the other guys easier. Yeah. I'll put two under this guy and swap it with this guy. Cause
Because then maybe I can take this guy out before he starts rolling his defense also. Mm, yeah, maybe. Okay, uh, so I'm going to roll three. Hmm. On a defense. Multi arrow with two dice. The only problem is uh, I need to get through thick skin. I don't think this works very well. Uh, we'll see. I like multi arrow, but I, I think I just need the attack. But no, I I'll, I could aim on this guy is thick skin. I need three to get him though, but I may not get that. I could. Hmm, this is tough. Uh, the defense get hit for one. I'll 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 roll multi arrow again. I'll aim for this guy. Uh, wait, purple, he can't get there. Green would move in. Yeah, but the defense. I really want a defense, though. Yeah, uh, let's just, yeah, let's go defense. Let's just do this. Okay. So my target uh, gets hit for two, and I get to apply two of them to somebody else. So this guy loses one, still alive, unfortunately. But I do get two defense, which is nice. Uh, and the other two, I want to apply it to this guy, but he's got recovery one, or recover one. I'll just recover one when he moves over. I was hoping I would get a two and a one. It would have been perfect, but it didn't work out. So let's go with... I'm going to get to switch health around too. I think I'll just hit this guy's defense away so that he rolls his defense to die again and maybe gets a bone. Yeah, that might be silly, but that's the way I'm going to do it. Yeah, that's not that great. Okay. Uh, purple guy. He'll go like this. He's trying to get around to this spot. Green. He'll move in. Recover. Doesn't recover any. He'll roll an attack on me. He hits me for one. We down tick our defense. This guy is going to roll an attack and a defense on me. Uh, he just gets two bones, so he just hits himself on his backup plan for careless. That's very nice. And this guy over here can't get in anywhere, so he's just going to stay where he is. But he does roll a defense die. Maybe kills himself off a bone. Yes! <laughs> so he does his backup plan of careless, rolling a bone. And these guys just take themselves out. That seems like a nice way to do it. Okay, round three. Start of my turn. I get to switch the health of two units. Uh, I'll just switch these two three-pointers, uh, three health. I, I don't want to take it away from this guy. I want to try to take this guy out. So I'll switch the two three-pointers. No big deal. Okay. So let's just go with three attack dice and a mech leg consumable. I don't know if we'll get that going in this one, but we can try. We don't have to apply it. We can put it back uh, if we don't get the like three or four. Uh, so my target is this guy. And 
Okay, so I get three off that, one off here, and I hit him for two, uh, which isn't enough. So thick skin only takes one damage. Purple guy, uh, oh, it doesn't move. There's no way to get in there. The green one uh, rolls an attack on me. Hits for two, so I lose a health and my defense. Uh oh and the blue one here is going to roll an attack and hopefully he rolls a bone on his defense die uh, he doesn't so he also hits me for one i'm down to three health uh oh uh oh round four i now have to switch the health of two units I'll just do the three pointers again. I, I want this guy at one health. Maybe he rolls, uh, but then I want to attack him. I should probably just use it, do it, switch it, so I take someone else out. Yeah, I'll switch with this guy. So one under him, three under this guy, and I'll just try to take this guy out. So three attack, a defense, we'll hit him here. All right, we get one defense, we get a bone. Uh, we hit for three, we do take this guy out. Do I wanna split targets actually? We only need to hit this guy for one. But I do want my innate. I do want my innate. Uh, I don't need to do damage to my target. Split target, select a new target after applying. I probably should put my dice in a different way but I still would need to spend this whole thing. So yeah, I'm not gonna do it because then I have to spend this whole die and I wouldn't be near my eight plus one. So yeah, we're gonna skip that. All right, so this guy's gone. And boom. Okay, so we have five bones. One defense. All right, purple guy, he's gonna come over and say, hey, I wanna join the party and he's not gonna roll anything. This guy will roll one attack die on me Rolls a bone. That's a thick skin hit, or a careless hit, actually. Sweet deal. Round five. Start of my turn. I have to switch the health. Uh, so I'll give this guy three, this guy two. So three now under here. Um... Do I run? I don't think I run. Uh, what do I have? Three health. I'm gonna roll my defense. Maybe I unlock my Nate plus one. Maybe I roll better defense. And I'm going to. to attack the. I'm gonna go for this guy and try to just eliminate him. Uh, I do eliminate him. He does have two health, thick skin. He gets eliminated. I get my bone for my plan here. So he does go away. That worked out. And uh, boom, these are all gone. This is consumed. And we flip our chip. We're now an eight plus one, so we can scout two, right? Before battle, reveal up to two baddies in their active stacks. Gilly may cycle them to the bottom of their stacks. Beautiful. All right, so we got our an eight plus one. For the rest. Okay. Now this guy will go. He only rolls one attack die on me. Hits for one. I go down to two health left. Uh, ooh. Uh, we're going to fatigues. So I'm down to one health. This guy is down to two. And a defense. I don't swap any more health. So this can go away. And it's my turn. Ooh. I don't have a way to heal. Uh, I don't have a way to heal. So I need to get through four damage.
to get through his two health, thick skin, and his defense. Uh huh. I don't have a way to get enough bones to help me out. So it's all in the dice here. It's all in the dice. Uh, run away? No, I'll just die in fatigues. I already, I'm down to one health. I have no way to gain health, right? So, Although, I could use Fortune Discovery to get extra mech leg to then help get me to Broadhead. Hmm. I could get this back. Because uh, if I can get to five bones, it's possible if these fail me and I get some bones, I could technically get to five and then hit this guy for five damage. I think I'm going to risk it. Skinning knife? No, nope. skinning knife doesn't do anything for me. No time. No, it's the uh, it's the one where you just take a baddie at the end, and you put it on top of here, and it gives you surprise. Yeah, it's not it's not like extra damage. I'm gonna spend this on my turn, and we'll get this extra mech leg back, and we're gonna roll all these. I think it's a waste. I don't think it'll work out. Maybe it's dumb. Maybe it's very dumb. But rolling a defense die is not going to help me. It's worth a shot. Yeah, I'm going to try it. Uh, oh, no way. Did I do it? I got four? Did I say four? Yes, I got four. Two, one, one. And two bones on this thing. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> uh, not enough to get to the fortune discovery again. Damn. <laughs> All right, sweet deal. We did it. Woo -hoo! <laughs> uh, all right, we did it. Wow. <laughs> Holy. I didn't have faith in those attack dice. I did not have faith in them at all. <laughs> That's why I was trying to think of other ways out of it. Ah, uh, that was sweet. Okay, sweet deal. All right. So, oh, he goes back with one health. <laughs> Troll down. Troll down. Uh, then we go here. Uh, okay, so we get two loot. Rusty Optics. At the end of the round, you can gain three initiative spots. You can use it twice. I like that one a lot. Especially with low initiative gear locks. Maybe not this guy. Infused Incense. Roll two additional attack dice on your turn. Don't cost dex. Very nice. And that's it. Uh, and then we get a progress. Out of here. So we need two more. Uh, and then two training points. Two training points. I feel like health uh, is needed. Health and a Wolverine, maybe? Mm, I don't know if I have the decks for that yet. Mm. I need more survivability. That was too close. I'm going to see, soon I'm going to see raging orcs. I'm going to see hardy, annoying guys. Uh, I'm moving into day five now. So we'll see a five point baddie. So I'm going to be getting extra attack dice thrown at me. Uh, so I'm thinking being more defensive. I know I could be more offensive with things like Piercing Arrow maybe. Piercing Arrow would have been a nice option to roll there instead of Multi-Arrow. I wish I had Piercing Arrow instead. That would have been sweet. But the Multi-Arrow would have been nice with the first option on the card, I guess. Um, health. And piercing arrow? Yeah, I did get a lot of thick skin early. So I shouldn't see much of it. But we haven't gone into the five-point stack. So I could just draw into like the next three from the five-pointers. Could all be thick skin. Um, they could all be thick skin in the top of that stack. Who even knows? So I may still have to deal with that. Uh, hello, Matthias. Okay. Keep leg. Oh, yes. Uh, I don't have to use the mech leg. Yes, you're right. I chose not to apply it. Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, I did. Chose, chose not to apply those two bones. There was no point. Thanks for the catch. Uh, okay, defense and piercing. Yep. Uh, oh, no. That's too many dice and not bumping up the dex. Unless I do a dex and a die, I will not. Because I'm only at four here. Uh, and I want to roll my three attack dice to start. Preferably the defense with it. If I do get a piercing arrow, I want to throw that in there. I probably should go dex and a, a skill die. But I feel like my health is too low. So I'm going to go up on the health. Okay, health for sure. So he's at six. Um, and then I'll take piercing, I think. Just so I have an option and an opening turn. to If I want to go offensive, if I don't want to split it, like it's going to be, that's going to be pointless for a five point baddie in the next one, if it's only that. Um, it might be better to throw a piercing arrow at him, especially if he goes before me and rolls some defense dice. That might also be useless though. But thick skin, it could help with the thick skin guy. I mean, that might be pointless actually. Like woven snare might be better. Woven snare or a dex. But we need this uh, going forward in the playthrough anyway. Uh, woven snare. That's reducing the attack stat. Uh, I do like that one a lot. And that might be very good for a five pointer. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for the snare right now. I think I'm going to go for the snare. And I can put it in as the star, so I can start there, right? We can scout to make sure we get what we need, right? So if I see a uh, guy with thick skin, I can I can throw him away with my innate plus one. So I don't really need that too much. Okay, so that's what I'm going to go with. A woven snare, help me out, survivability. It works for survivability and a health. So we're going to play, we're going to, we're going to try to play a little safer here uh, in the early going. I don't want to fail in episode one very much. <laughs> I want to go to at least episode two. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is gone. Never, um... No, we could see this again, right? These don't go away. Or do we have enough? No, we probably don't have enough solo cards to do the whole campaign and never see a duplicate. So I'll just throw this one. Uh, yeah, I'll just throw it over here to the side for now. Okay. Um, recovery? Uh, I think healing might be a good option. Going up to six. Okay, six. Uh, yeah, we'll go with that. Um, okay, that's recovery. For battle, uh, we can wait on that. Um, so next is day five. Oh, defeat a batty on loot card, skinny knife. Thank you, Janet. Awesome catch. Uh, yeah, awesome catch. So it has to be from the last battle. I think you take orcs, but I, I think I don't want to waste this. I, I think I want to save it for using on kobolds only. And maybe in some of the later days. Maybe in some of the later days. I mean, I will see guys with higher initiative, but again, it has to be from the last battle. And I didn't have a kobold in there or like uh, scales. So like I could use it on an orc. But I am only drawing one baddie. I know I get to look at it. I get to look at the top two five-pointers. So I can try to make it the right baddie. But I feel like I want to wait till I'm kind of outnumbered. And that's when I feel like it'd be more useful. So I'm going to I'm gonna pass on Skinny Knife for now and save it. I feel like I shouldn't have really wasted it there in an early scenario. But then again, I'm getting so much loot right now. I don't want to like have it sit there forever and waste a slot. Um, yeah, that's... Hmm. I mean, I could carry it forward to the next campaign if I feel like it's, like, not really needed with this baddie group. But I don't think I would do that. Uh, and I also have Rusty Optics. So I could gain some initiative spots if I, I'm at worst case. Uh, so, yeah. All right. Let's draw day five. Circuit Breaker. The tunnel ahead seems like the only way through this cave now that enemies are on my heels. But the terminal controlling this steel door is sparking and shooting electricity like a summer storm. And the controls seem jammed up. There are two ways this can go down. I can attempt to unlock the thing while fending off my pursuers. Or I can think like a troll and randomly jam every metal implement I can find directly into the guts of the terminal in the hopes of getting lucky. Another 40 days one here. 
My mother tongue taught me not to stick metal objects into outlets. Oh, sorry. My mother taught me. Why did I say tongue? My mother taught me not to stick metal objects into outlets. Battle cube baddie points. Once per turn, prior to rolling other dice, you may spend one dex to make a single lock picking attempt. On a 3T, 4L, 3F lock. Save your progress. Encounter success is achieved as soon as lock picking is successful or all baddies are defeated. Hmm. So that's just a one five point baddie. And I get to play a lock picking game. But I don't see any bonus for doing this. But if I open the lock, I don't have to deal with the baddie and I could just win ahead of time. Or I can despise my mother. <laughs> battle cube baddie points. During battle, you may place any die you roll in the bottom of the any meter rather than applying its result. Does not reduce your available attack defense dice. Once any meter is full of dice, 11 including rounds counter, deal, apply as desired, true damage to baddies on the battle mat equal to attack, number of attack slash defense dice there, and remove slash exhaust dice. I don't feel like I really need to do the second option because I only have one baddie, but I can see if I had like a full, full baddie line, I, I would see that one as being kind of good. But I feel like this battle isn't going to be a long one. So this is more for like long battle. This I could just get lucky and end it early. Uh, I think I'm going to go for the first one. Any, any thoughts? Any thoughts? Am I missing something here that you guys think? I think it would take too long maybe to fill up the, fill up the meter. But I mean that's a, that's a good one though. I probably could get it pretty full rolling like four dice every round. Yeah, first option's better. With one baddie, yep. Okay, perfect. I like it. We're all on the same page here. Okay. Sometimes I read these and I totally like miss the advantage on one of them. And then I play and then I get crushed. And I'm like, whoops, I forgot. That's not how it should have worked. I read it wrong. Um, all right. Uh, so, yeah. Battle cue, baddie points. So, before battle, before battle, we're going to scout. One. So, we got a guy with taunt and callus. So, he's always getting taunt, which doesn't matter... In a battle when there's only one guy on the board, I'm going to have to attack him anyway. And I, won't, I shouldn't be adjacent to him. Hopefully, not really much in the battle. He only has five health. Only rolling two attack dice. But he is callous, which I think means I have to kill him with attack dice. Is that what callous is again? I always get that mixed with um, cunning. Callous. The unit can only lose HP from damage dealt by attack dice. Well, good thing. I have only attack dice, really. That guy's fine. I'm going to keep him up front. And I'll look at the next one. So we have an Orc Rager rating, Rage 2. Five health. Could I one-shot this guy? He's risky. I feel like putting him to the back just to keep him away from the other Orcs. This way I see more five-point trolls instead. But it also means I see more, more scales. Yeah, I'll put him to the back, I think, for now. Yeah, I'll put him to the back. Actually, what was the initiative on that guy? He's only a three. This other guy I kept as a four initiative. So there's a chance I could go after him, but I could be far enough away that it doesn't matter. So we're going there. All right. So this is our baddie. Five health. Before that, though, I'm going to put this right here on lane one. Okay, he's obviously going to step on this one. And we're going to roll that in a second. I just have to put myself over here. Roll my die. A four. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. All right. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Matt, you're correct. Yeah, on the later playthrough on day eight or nine, yeah, I definitely pick option two later, that's for sure. Okay, uh, so we'll start there. Uh, let's roll this die. Uh, red bone, uh, woven snare. <laughs> okay, great. Got a bone to start here. Uh, okay, so Gilly. Three attack, one defense. I don't see the point in rolling anything else really right now. Uh, I don't feel like using infused incense. I don't feel like I need that yet. 
Yeah, no, we're good. Uh, so we got another bone, a defense, and just two attack. So he's down to three health left. Maybe we can take him out the next one. Okay, he goes. We'll put him down here. No defense to roll. Round two. Gilly. Uh, we could try to get a fortunate discovery. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this defense die. If we just get one more bone, we can grab a uh, camo. And we get that bone we need. Perfect. So I'll do my backup plan. And we get camo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, camo, do we have to roll right when we get it or something? Or we choose? Is there anything? Uh, roll this skill when acquired. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, we get a plus or minus one. And keep it in your lock slot until you use. Gilly must keep a rolled result. Use an exhaust camo when facing battle encounter with battle cube adding points. Okay, so we got the plus or minus one. Worst result, but it's fine. We could use it in the next one to reduce by one to keep it a five point baddie uh, instead of a five and a one pointer. It's an option. Uh, okay, so two defense. Uh, we only hit this guy for two though. But we got two defense, which is great. Okay, so he's down to one left. Uh, his go. He'll move up. He's going to roll two attack dice on me. And he hits me for three, knocks away one. I lose a health. Round three, Gilly. Uh, attack for three and a defense. Boom, we hit him for three. It's a more than enough. We get a defense, no bones, nothing to worry about there. Bang, bang, bang. Uh, and this guy's gone. First five pointer down. Feels good. Uh, let's reset. Go home with a one, one loss health. It's not the worst. Hmm. Hmm. I still don't think I use skinning knife at all. But anyways, uh, reward phase. Uh, we get a loot. Fortunate discovery. Okay, that's the theme of this playthrough. So our four loot slots are full. Uh, so I may look for better loot here, actually. I may just look for better loot with the fortunate discovery. Although a second use of camo later might be might be very juicy. Uh, progress. We're one away. Uh, and a training point. Training point. Now I take piercing arrow. Or brute buster. I feel like it's a skill, but it could also be a dex. No, it's probably a dex. Yeah, I'm taking a dex. We're going to five dex. Dex. I'm done. Uh, lock picking. Oh, I did forget. Yeah, sorry. I did forget. I did forget about the lock picking. So I could have had, maybe have won it faster. Sorry, guys. I totally forgot. But it only hurts me, right? It only hurts me. Uh, so it's not like... I would replay that if it was something that gave me an advantage that I uh, threw out that battle. But Oh, no, no, no. I may spend a dex. It's optional. I chose not to. <laughs> I chose not to. Yeah, that's what I'm going to go with. Not that I forgot. I just chose not to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's not bad. I, it's not a forced thing. It's not forced. Okay, good. I feel better now. Um, yeah, I wouldn't want to waste the decks there because I always want to roll my defense and I just want to take the guy out. So yeah, I don't think that's... A, I would even really want to do that anyway. Just thinking back. Based on the guy I got. Okay, so I took a dex and that's it. Uh, recovery. I'm only missing one health. I'm debating looking for better loot. It frees up a slot. But I could just use camo here and get another camo back. So yeah, maybe I just heal. I just heal. Let me just heal. Okay. Day six. Uh, I don't want to use skinning knife. <laughs> Just testing if I was paying attention. <laughs> good out, good out. <laughs> Trap of my own making. Too big and too many. I could never overpower or outrun them. Either this works or my journey ends before the sun sets. Shaking here. The plan? Be my own bait. What could Oh, I love this one. 
Uh, what could possibly go wrong? The trap is set just as the golden sun is beginning to sink, which I pray helps obscure my hasty work of covering the freshly excavated pit. Now I just need to screech like a wounded griffin, stand in plain sight, and hope they don't simply jump over my, the trap before tearing me limb from limb. So combat or combat, be the bait, be the bait. Battle cue would be two five-pointers. So I can't mess with this one with camo. That's useless right now. That sucks. Uh, as baddies enter the battle mat, roll a d6 for each. One to two, trap does nothing. Three to six, baddie is stunned for the first two rounds. Use a stun effect die. Or maybe I shouldn't be the bait. You decide it's best to get your own trap and fight around your spikes. I think it's the option I usually pick, but it depends on what gear lock, I guess. Battle cues, two five-point baddies. I get surprise. Then baddies take one true damage anytime they move to a new position on the battle mat, including starting position. So first initial position. So they come in taking a damage right off the bat. And I have surprise ahead of them. And neither option gives me an extra point. I feel like this is always the option I pick. But I may have done this before if it came later and I had like a 20 pointer in like our multiplayer playthroughs, but this wouldn't be the same one. Yeah, this is just a solo. So maybe that is not a thing. Maybe I'm just thinking of five pointers that's happened where I had one and it just made sense to come in stunned. Mm. I feel like option two here. So I know I'm at the top of the queue and they each take a damage, which could allow me to one shot one of them. Um, and I get to peek at the first two. So before I set this up, I can peek. Option two is only good if they're melee. Ah, true. And that's burned me before, actually. Now that you say that, I forgot about that. Yeah, because the other ones won't move around. I get to look. I can scout two five-pointers. But I think I, I, I don't know if I have to choose my option first. Uh, I probably have to, I don't know when that happens. I'm not sure. Mm. Whatever you guys want, I'll let you guys pick this one. And then we'll look at the two five pointers. I, I think I'm not allowed to look yet. Actually, let's check the rules. Let's see if we can find the rules. I know there's an order to this madness. I just need to know when I can use this in 8 plus 1. It says before battle. And before battle, I know it's listed in the new book. There it is. So it's on the right side. Now that you understand battle cue basics, let's go through the battle setups from start to finish. Trigger before battle effects, such as skills uh, like Tantrum's Rage or the innate plus one from Gilly. And then use encounter card instructions to build your battle cue. Uh, that doesn't help me really. Most of the encounters and too many bones result in a battle of some sort. Sometimes the baddies you face are especially defined or specifically defined on your encounter card, but more often the encounter will include Battle cue batty points. Is there? Uh, yeah, but my question is, and it's not in here though. I don't. I probably have to read up further, but um, yeah. My question is, uh, do I have to pick my option before I get to scout? Like, do I have to pick my choice first, and then it's before battle? I would assume I have to pick first. The innate reads: uh, before battle, reveal up to two baddies from their active stacks. Gilly may cycle them to the bottom of their stacks. I know this is really truly meant just to work with his traps. I don't feel it's meant to like game the system where I, I scout there and then I get to pick this option. Pick first, then scout. No, first scout, then choose. Oh, Yanis, you got me confused. Sam's done the other way. I don't know. I'm sure it's in the book. I'm sure up above it, it walks you through when to make your choice. 
Encounters. Hmm. Read the front. The back is my choice. You may read the entire card before choosing. I feel like you choose first. Because you may not know it's a battle first, right? Yeah, you choose first because you may have an option that's not a battle or a battle. And how would you know there's a before battle window if you haven't chosen yet, right? So, yeah. That's why I always choose first, but I'm just thinking about it. Yeah. Now that I've said it out loud, it makes sense. Okay. Yeah, choose first. Okay, so what are we choosing? This is up to you guys. What do you want to choose? Option one or option two? Throw your votes in the chat and I'll just go with whatever one I see more numbers of. Do we want to be the bait? We're rolling to possibly stun the baddie. Or do we want to have surprise and they take true damage? At least if they're ranged, they still take true damage once. And I'll take it. That's not bad. Like even that's a guarantee just at least the first jump in. So I don't know. I still like two better, I think. But we never do it. Two, 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 two. Uh, I see one, two, three, four, five twos, and only three ones. So we're going with two. Two is the winner. All right. <laughs> Thank you. And Mel threw a two in there just for fun. Okay. <laughs> too slow on the keyboard. All right. Uh, so we're going with number two. Uh, now let's scout before battle. Normal scouting would be day, the day before, but this, this scouting is different. This scouting says before battle. So this is like in that before battle window. And this one says before battle too. I think this is an addition to scouting. Like you could scout the day before in the recovery phase. Then when you get around to the next day, look who crawled out from under a rock. It's Ryan. How's it going? Hello. <laughs> Rigged. Okay. So what do we get? We got the orc. Orc Axe, what is this? Orc Axe Bearer. Uh, all right. Rating and Callus. So since we picked option two, a melee is good, right? We want the melee. So he's taking true damage. This jerk does roll defensive dice. I don't mind about the Callus, it's fine. The rating might be a little scary with other orcs. Are we keeping or are we throwing away? I think we keep. I think we keep. We all cast our vote, but Mel is super delegate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think this... You you can't scout with this ability unless there's a battle. Because we just looked in the rulebook. In the latest rulebook, there's a before battle window. It's very specific. It's before you set it up the queue, but it's before... Like, you know there's a battle. Mel has an 8 times 5. <laughs> uh, how are you close? He's melee, so keep. All right, I'm down. That's what I was thinking, too. All right, so we'll keep this guy. Next one. Let's scout the next one. Oh, it's arranged. Uh, my first impressions are throw this guy to the back. Seven health, engulf. Uh, better, obviously, when there's more baddies on the board. He's got weakened two on the bones roll. He rolls two defense, two attack. Yeah, this guy's kind of a jerk. I know there's a second one of him in there, because I know in previous playthroughs, uh, in multiplayer, even we've always thrown him to the back, and then we draw the next one usually right away. Ditch, yeah, we're ditching, okay. And, whoops, uh, the next one we don't know, but this will be our next baddie, yes. Okay, so let's throw them out there. So, six for the Orc Axe Bearer. Uh, he'll take, oh, sorry, I forgot to put this here, I think. Yeah, I'll put that there before battle. Yeah, yeah. Because I knew this guy was coming. Yeah, I'll put that there for sure. Uh, so we'll put him here. One true damage. Okay. So he's down to five health. Then next. Oh, we got a hardy inspire one. Oh, man. Okay. So let's see where the initiative's going here. Three. But this guy's a three. This is perfect because he will inspire no one because he is going after uh, this guy. And he is also melee. It worked out good. He is also melee. We're only three attack dice, though. So he's got six health, but he's going to come in with one true damage. Okay. Both down to five. One rolling, no defense, but hardy is going to be annoying. But at least if I can run him around the board and kite, 
uh, we can work him down that way. And that's on his turn he takes that damage, uh, not on my turn. So we can hopefully take him down two around. Uh... Use golf versus Hardy later. Yeah, that's a good call. Top page 18 indicates encounters are resolved, chosen. Then the battle starts with the creation of the battle queue. So even a before battle ability would have been done before you choose the encounter. Oh. Let's look. I'm curious. I want to see. Uh, let's see. Page 18. I don't see. I am looking at rulebook 2.1, if that matters. Uh, the one that's on their latest PDF that's on the website. I don't know if that makes a difference. Yeah, I don't think it is correct. I think the way we did it is correct. You make your choice. Because remember, some of these cards have like a peaceful or a battle. So once you know you're doing a battle, then you open the before battle window. Then you build your queue. Then you place your stuff. You roll your die. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do it that way. We'll keep going. I just thought of it with his innate. It's kind of like interesting. But yeah, it's okay. We're good. We're good. Okay. So we're doing option two, right? Yeah. They came out have uh, true damage. I did that. I have surprise, so no matter what I roll, uh, I still go before them anyway. So the surprise part didn't really matter. And they take a true damage every time they move to a new position. So, hmm, should I move to a position that is far away from them? I think so. Although, I'm going to go over here. So let's roll this die, the trap. Oh, yeah, minus two. Minus two attack. So this guy literally never rolls attack dice the whole fight. So I do not care about him. And I'm just going to try to snipe this guy. That works good. That worked good. That worked good. All right. So Gilly. I feel like there's no point in... Uh, I do have multi-arrow. Yeah, we could do that. Three attack, one defense, and multi-arrow. Sure. Do I still target this guy, though, for the heavy damage? No, I still think I target this guy. I need to hit him for sure. I can't rely on multi-arrow letting me move a damage over. So I think I still just roll on this guy. And then I let the damage spill over to him if I get multi-arrow going. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry, Sakabra. I might have misread what you said. Yeah, you said done after you chose the encounter. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, sorry. I may have misread what you said. Yeah, we're all on the same page. I got you. I got you. I misread. I'm being dumb. Okay. Uh, so, three attack on this guy. He's hardy. So, only one goes away. We rolled multi-arrow, so we can put one of the die to this guy. So, we hit him for one. Not the biggest. Not the best multi-arrow play here, but uh, this is exhausted. These are spent. I get one defense. All right. This blue guy will go. I'll have him move. I don't know. This way, I guess. Yeah, I don't think there's a way I can really use him to block. Uh, then this guy will go. Uh, he inspires, but there's nobody to inspire. Uh, let's have him just move like this. Oh, yeah. Sorry. New position. New position. True damage. And it's only one total. I think there's an FAQ entry on this. That it's not uh, damage for every single space. I feel like I read that before. I feel like I read that before. What is this encounter? Base set six. All 
Or maybe I read that in a, uh, yeah, I don't see it. Mm, I feel like I've read that before, though. It might have been on the internet somewhere. No, I don't think it's an FAQ. I could be wrong. All right. Anyways, uh, yeah, so he just takes one true damage, I think, no matter how many spaces they move. And then this guy uh, will move to here. He takes a true damage on his turn. And can't reach me. Oh, this guy should have rolled a defense. I got that. So this guy has two. Yeah, he has two defense. Okay, round two. I have five decks. One, two, three, four, five. This guy can still get to me no matter what. So I think I just hold my ground. But then I need him moving. So I don't want to get trapped here. Yeah. So one, two, three. Four, five, and I'm going to fire on this guy. Move two, so they have to move to get you. Exactly, Janet. I don't want to get trapped in the corner, so then this guy can keep moving. One move. I guess I could just go here. Here's the same, right? Yeah. No. Jane is right. One, two. Yeah, just move two. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Why do three? I'm not it doesn't get me any further away, right? Uh okay, so we've got three decks. Uh, I'm debating rolling my defense again, maybe getting it up, but I think I'll just roll attacks. Make sure I hit this guy. And we do hit him. Hardy only lets one get through. One true damage. He doesn't roll anything because he has his defense. He's minus his attack. And this guy will move up. He gets a true damage. Now he rolls three attack dice on me. Uh, I block one, take two, down to four health. I need this guy to move now. Round three. So I just move one. He'll die when he moves, right? Baddies take one true damage anytime they move to a new position on the battle map. Yeah, so he'll take one and die, so I don't need to attack him anymore. I gotta take this guy out. If I can hit him for, for three, I take away his two defense, hit him for one, and then he's down to one and he'll die when he moves anyway. And I don't, there's no reason to slow roll this one. So we're targeting the Orc Axe Bearer. And we hit him for four, so he's done. And we get a defense. Oh, this should have been re-rolled. Sorry, this came out, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, I meant to pull that out and roll it. Uh, this is gone. And then this guy will go, he'll move and take true damage. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, loot. Multi-use tool. Uh, okay. Uh, I will be... Think about what we're going to do for the training points. I'm just going to go grab a drink. I'll be right back and we'll figure out how we're going to use these two training points. And multi-tool, I don't know what to get rid of here, um, but I'll be right back.
and we're back. Okay. Just make sure. All right. So let's see what the chat was saying. Ditch multi tool. <laughs> Uh, during anyone's lockpick attempt, uh, yeah, this is, I don't really care for this stuff. Yep, I'm down with digital multi-tool. Uh, God, he's got damage for me. Wolverine and Dex. Wolverine and Dex. Yep, I'm down with that. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yeah, Wolverine and Dex. Uh, that's a good call. That's a good call. I like that. Pick some bad skill. It looks too easy. Uh, yeah, I'm having an easy time now, but the cool part about the campaign is it's, I think it's supposed to be a little easier in the first one because you don't have any scars and stuff yet. But as we go on, I have to be careful because I also want to take forward some good stuff if it lets me. So it's like, uh, I mean, I could take some goofy dice. I'll take the, yeah, I'll do the Wolverine. And Wolverine. Oh, that's not a Wolverine. The Wolverine's over here. 15, not 16. Uh, 15. We have him right here. Little Yeti from the ally pack here. <laughs> yeah, that guy or this guy? I like this touch. <laughs> so there's our little Yeti. Um, and a Dex. Yeah, don't go crazy. Yeah, I could go crazy later, but right now we want to... Yes, Janet's correct. We want to go through all seven tyrants, hopefully. <laughs> I'll get challenged. Don't worry. This has been working out okay. We almost did die on, like, our first combat. Or was it second? Second combat. Uh, where I got down to one health in the corner, and we pulled it out, got lucky. So that could have spiraled it down. So I don't think it's been too easy. But that yes, that last scenario was pretty easy. Uh, in the decks. Did I do it? No, I didn't do it right. We should go to six. I'm pretty sure I didn't flip that. Yeah, we just had five, right? Hmm. I am playing hard mode. Be good with my choices, says John. That's good advice. Yeah, this is why I'm on edge right now, trying to play super efficient and like pick the right things. And I'm kind of like listening to you guys' choices, but I'm overriding them if I think they're not like efficient. Because I am playing a solo. Gilly is, he's solid, but I mean, he, things can go wrong for him very quickly. Um, and we are playing with no extra buffs and we're playing campaign mode. Um, yeah, I was on five. Okay, perfect. So now I'm on six. Uh, we're going to day seven. So that is a five and two, two, or two, one, sorry. Yeah, that feels okay. So I roll three attack one defense that's four of my decks plus a pet plus multi arrow could be a roll and that's like a good first roll that's not bad okay uh camo i don't know i don't know see camo i could just reduce the one pointer being on the board make it a little easier for myself i don't need to save it for like the tyrant fight or anything weird like that <sighs> so recovery um so we use our two training points. We got our progress. Did we get it? I don't think we did. Progress, we're there. Yeah, because we had three progress from the first three days, plus three more. That should put our six we need. So we could fight Nom any point, any point now, but I think we'll buy us some time. Take defense dice out. Oh, I did. yeah, I caught that. Okay, we caught that. Use your battle queue adjustment. Yep, Freudian slip. There are two point baddies coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, are there? Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> oh, that's fun. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, now, recovery. Recovery, that's what I want to do. So I, th I, I think healing is a good idea. I do want to get another health or two before the nom fight. Because his true damage business plus his attack die could be a little rough. Maybe an extra defense die. But I think I need to go all offense on him. So before Nom, I feel like I need one more attack. I need Piercing Arrow. 
marked enemy. Like, there's too much here. I, I won't be able to get it all before the Nom fight. I don't think. We're going into day seven, right? I have till day nine. Hmm. Hmm. And it doesn't matter delaying because he doesn't have anybody to help him, so it doesn't change for that. Okay, so day seven. Day seven. I need piercing armor for Nom. That is true. So that is like high priority. Piercing arrow is next. I mean, I could forget my health. If I go offensive enough and I, I it works out, I have infused incense. I'm saving that for Nom fight just to roll the extra attack. Like this infused incense plus piercing arrow plus like all the attack I can roll uh, with the six decks should be enough to get me there and we wipe them out. That's my plan. That's my plan. But yeah, I think I would like one more attack die would be nice. So maybe I just worry about offensive and just to take him out faster. Because I'm not going to be able to carry over all, like if I went up to like four, uh, uh, four on the health stat there, like up to seven or eight, I'm not going to be able to carry all that forward anyway. So I really just need to get through this Nom fight and survive. Yeah, okay. So let's see here. We get, uh, what do we got? A goblin investment. I wake up wearing a new vest. Oh, we had this one the other day. A friendly traveler must have came across my campsite in the night and seen the fire getting low. It's shoddily made, but the vest they wrapped around me is thick and warm and ticking? Goblins. It's always goblins. It appears I've noticed it appears I've noticed in it in time. I can take my time and diffuse it here on the spot, salvaging as much as I can for later use, or take my chances, figure out a safe way out of the vest while on the move. Either way, it's daylight in enemy territory. I need to get a move on. So peaceful. I don't need the extra progress, but that extra training point up there is is uh yeah, yum yum yum. Alright, jacket this jacket is the bomb. Persistent. During battle, roll a d6 at the start of each of your turns. On one, the bomb goes off, which it happened to me in my first roll in our last playthrough we did last week. Uh, and Or, two to five, nothing happens. Six, the bomb is diffused. Immediately draw two loot. Remove the persistent effect. I want to risk it on the first one. Uh, or dismantle the jacket. Roll a d6 to diffuse the bomb. One to four, cut the red wire. Bomb is not diffused. Five to six, cut the blue wire. Bomb is diffused. Draw two loot. Uh, to re-roll d6, discard one loot, which I have spare loot to do this part. You may stop attempting to defuse at any time, but the bomb will explode. Take 3-2 damage if bomb explodes. So I have one chance to dismantle it. And then on the second option it says here, add all baddies atop this card to the battle queue for the next battle. Both choices. Encounter success achieved no matter the outcome. If you are boomer, automatically defuse the bomb and draw two loot. Is there like a misprint on that? Oh, man. Uh, don't keep the bomb again. Yeah, I know. I don't want it. But it is an extra training point. And we could do one more day before we have to fight Nom. We could do one more day, but I might not get another battle. I don't want to roll that in the Nom battle. Maybe I don't need the extra training point. Man. John saying one, Mel saying one, get the training point. Yeah. All right. Hopefully we draw into a battle on the next encounter. If not, I'm going to be a sad panda. Sad, sad panda. All right. Uh, let's see here. Yep, so we'll do option one. We'll get the progress we don't need, right? We're already there. Yep. So we'll get two training points. So 
So this becomes loot. So I'm going to get rid of Fortune Discovery. Oh, the last battle. I'm going to put this guy on Skinning Knife. Yeah, I'm going to put this guy on Skinning Knife. Uh, the uh, scales we got. And he'll just stay there. Oh, but it says before drawing your next encounter. Oh, okay. We'll say I do it before the next one. Yeah, we'll do we'll do this. I just don't want to forget. I'll do that before the next uh, the next one. Um, but I would have done it for this one, but we didn't get a, a fight. Yeah, yeah. It affects our next battle. I think we're good. Okay. Pop fortune discovery. Yeah. Oh, fortune discovery. Yeah, I could take it for bait. I do have this guy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, am I allowed to do it now? I can't do this right now though. Only on your turn or uh in the recovery phase. I don't think I'm allowed to do it right now. But either way, it's gone. Yeah. If you blow up, they owe you apologies. Eh, it's all good. <laughs> I could still take Drew Damage from the other option, too. So it's like, whatever. Uh, okay, so we took this. During the next battle, we got to remember that. Uh, all right, so two training points. Uh, we're definitely taking Piercing Arrow. But before that, should I take a stat? Attack. We're going to try on the attack with the first training point. Uh, it's successful. It's successful. So we get to a... Four attack dice. And then we'll take piercing arrow. Okay. Man, this Yeti, I don't know if he's worth it, but we'll find out. I mean, it could help me still, just rolling him out for a meat shield. You can use fortunate during the recovery phase. But I get this, like, right now. And I don't really want to replace any of these other ones. Because this I could go... Uh, nom. Nom is what? Oh, he's only two initiative. Yeah, maybe I don't need rusty optics. I don't want to carry this forward, but like, does this count as loot? Persistent. No, I don't think this counts as loot. I think it's just a per persistent effect. Yeah, I don't think this part counts as loot. I don't think so. It, it usually would say, right? I think it's just a persistent effect that's going to affect me. Maybe I didn't need to get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't say loot. Yeah, I'm just in my head was thinking I had to keep it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I was going down that road. Yeah. I'm just going to do that. Okay. Um, so I don't need to pop that yet. So we got our training points. Now I'm in recovery. I will... I guess I'll throw this away. We'll get camo. Uh, camo I can choose. Camo. No, this is not camo. This is bait. This is bait. Bait, bait, bait. Bait, bait, bait. I meant to say bait. I think I have to roll it as its own thing. Yeah, I think so. Uh, bait. Yeah, I would say if count, it counts as loot. Yeah, okay, I thought so. I thought so, okay. Excellent, excellent. Um, we're good for health. Uh, let's try. Let's try for better loot on the rusty optics. Whoops. 
Oh, we miss. <laughs> okay, rusty optics are gone. Oh, womp womp. I've never had to go this bad for looking for better loot before. <laughs> 0 for 2. 0 for 2. That's fine. I also want to kind of clear up spots too. We might get some in the next one. Okay, so now we're going on to day 8. Do we fight Nom or do we take another encounter? I think we do another encounter. Because like waiting another day for Nom, it only gives us one chance at Nom though. That's the only thing I'm a little worried about. Greed doesn't pay. <laughs> Usually it does though <laughs> in this game. Uh, for me, sometimes it does. Actually, yeah, except when it does, yes. No, I'm, the, I'm looking for better loot. I almost always hit it, actually. I've probably only failed like four times ever. And you've just seen two of them today. That's how I feel. But I could be totally wrong, but I just feel like I never miss. Another encounter, go for marked. If I can get two training points, I could, yes. And then keep marked unlocked for the next scenario would be awesome. That is a prime one I would love to keep if I get to carry forward. Um, also, the command die would be kind of cool to keep going forward so you don't have to like... Oh, I guess you can unlock that straight. You don't need to build for it. Yeah, I guess that would be it. Yeah, marked is really the one you want. Okay, we're going to day eight. Uh, which is the old stomping grounds. Finally, a landmark I recognize. Before the tyrants invaded and things got bad, groups of us would hang out on these shores. The pond had a peaceful, calming quality that was worth a couple days of travel to reach. I know this area better than, uh, better than, where is it? Better than maybe anyone or anything. But now it's become home to a base of tr for trolls. With fresh water and plenty of fish, it's the perfect pl base of operations for them. The clean, clean spring water is also just right for brewing their fermented drink of choice. Guess we're about to see who knows this place better. All right, so we got uh, Reclaim Our Childhood. Battle Cues, Batty Points, including Troll Brewmaster. And oh, we had this one the other day too. Uh, and remember, we can reduce the, the points by one. So we are in day eight. So I can make it a seven. So we get the Troll Brewmaster and two one-pointers. On your turn, you may spend one dex to move any one, any die, one spot, including patties. Or, no time to get sentimental. Draw them out to the road. Battle queue, batty points, including troll brewmaster. Five point if possible. Only one batty may be on the battle mat at a time. Both choices, if successful, you may place special encounter if something's brewing on top of your encounter deck. But we're not even going to see it, so whatever. So I probably should just go for that extra loot. Yeah, I probably should just go for the extra loot. Anyone, anyone think I should go for option two? I mean, it would only be one baddie on the mat at a time. I'm not going to get the two training points I need to get to marked enemy. So that's kind of sucky. But, yeah, I don't know what I would take. I'd probably just take another health. Option one. Yep, yeah, let's do it. Let's try to get some more loot. Maybe we can carry it forward. Okay, so we're gonna reduce the uh, we're gonna reduce the battle cube by one using our camo. Although if that lock is there, uh, I mean that's only a one. Who cares? All right, we're gonna use it. Um, so we're going option one. <laughs> fully, fully option one. Okay. Uh, Troll brewmaster. Have we seen this guy yet? No, we haven't. Let's find the Troll Brewmaster. Okay, we're going to scout. I'm going to shuffle these guys in. I think we're going to scout the one-pointers before we build the queue. We know this guy was coming anyway. So we only need, its battle points is seven. So we get this guy included. He's five. So let's scout the top ones with our innate plus one. A hardy guy? He only rolls one attack die. But he is hardy. But I do have the Wolverine that I may get out and he does attack on his own turn. Oh, and my trap. Yes. Yes. But I get to scout first before I put my trap down. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, part of me wants to throw this guy away. So this guy, let's look at what this guy is. Let's look at our information we know. Five, 
Three attack, recover, thick skin one. So he'll be healing, he's got thick skin, attacking for three dice. So like I want to go after this guy really hard. At first, he might get nerfed uh, by two attack dice. Keep this guy. And this is why I was coming to that conclusion. Because this guy's rolling three attack dice, let's say our trap misses. He's attacking for three. So I'm focused on this guy. I'm going to be hitting this guy. He's recovering. He's thick skin. It may take a while to take this guy out. Maybe not because I have piercing arrow. But while I'm attacking this guy, I don't want a guy coming out that may be rolling a couple attack dice on me. This guy's only rolling one. So it's like not a big deal. And he's melee, which is kind of nice. But I'm ranged, so that I don't know if that really matters. But keep him, keep him. Uh, yeah, okay. Trap on the Brewmaster for sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that sounds right. Because he's going to be at the top of the queue anyway. So we're keeping the, the Cold Bolt. Uh, all right. Keep Frank. <laughs> it's Frank. Is that his name? Is it Frank? Is that what you call this guy? Frank the Frog? <laughs> okay. Uh, next is this one. We're scouting. Oh, Hardy and Compound. See, this I don't like. This I don't like. Because he will stick around if I'm distracted with that the troll brewmaster. And meanwhile, this guy's just hitting me for more and more attack dice as each round goes on. So this guy I would want to put to the back. Yeah, I'm putting him to the back. Unless anyone tells me otherwise. Toss, yeah. Okay, Matthias says toss. Awesome. All right. Frank and Joe the Hardy Boots. Oh, I get it. I didn't remember their names. I do remember those books from like middle school. Back in my day. All right. There we go. So we don't know that next one pointer coming. All right, so five points. So this is on your turn, I may spend a dex to move any one any die one spot if I want. If I remember, I probably won't remember, but I have the option. We'll see how we roll. So this guy will roll a trap on him in a sec. Three on this guy. Lay into melee. This guy is a three. This one's a four. And our last one is, hey, I'm older than you. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> All right. Uh, reading. Orc Grunt. Uh, there's no other orcs, so he's uh, he's fine. Uh, let's see. That's good. All right. Let's see where we're going. Four, top again. All right, so we don't really care about moving them around on the Anymeter, meter, really. If one of them had Inspire, that would be very nice to use. But I, I don't think we'll care about that, unless I'm missing something that would be good. During battle, roll a d6 at the start of each of your turns. Uh, sure. <laughs> so we're going to throw the d6 up here to remind us that we're going to be rolling it for the bomb. Uh huh. So this was pointless. Skinning knife, because uh, I'm in front of them all anyway. I might as well just pitch that at some point. We'll see though. So first goes the purple guy. Can I have him come in and block a little bit? Maybe. Not really. No, not really. Uh, okay. Yes! Minus two on the attack! Oh, that's so good. The trap is working all right. It, had, it was a little rusty at the fir at first, but we fixed it. The trap's working. Is he ranged? Uh, no, he's not. I'm being dumb. <laughs> no, he is not ranged. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I don't know why I thought that, but sure. What does the baddie on the loot do again? Uh, it gives me surprise over that type of baddie. So if uh, this kobold guy was at four and I went under him, I could, uh, even if I was down at the bottom here, I could give myself a uh, surprise over the kobold. So I think I push him behind me. Yeah, I think I would push him down below me, like in this case. That's how it would work. But uh, I already am above him, so it doesn't matter. It's, it's a miss. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think it would have just shifted all the kobolds down behind me. That's it. Uh, all right. Start of my turn. Let's let's try this new bomb jacket. Tick 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 tick. Let's see. Let's see. So on a one, the bomb goes off. I deal three damage to myself, one damage to all adjacent units. Ooh. Is there a reason why I should hide in the corner or not? Mm. Mm. No, that's okay. One damage, eh, whatever. Okay. Uh, so I roll a two to five, nothing happens. On a six, the bomb's diffused. Immediately draw two loot. Remove the persistent effect. So we want a six. A two to five over and over again is kind of scary because this does carry forward and could carry into the next battle. Oh, no, no. Uh, yeah, it does. Yeah, nothing would happen. So we need a one or a six to stop this madness. Here we go. A two. Okay, nothing happens. <laughs> Hopefully just nothing happens for the rest of this playthrough and it goes away. All right. Uh, our turn now. Six decks. Could do four attack. I have possibly of a defense. Uh, who is the problem here? They all only roll one attack die. Just the troll brewmaster has recover. So like... This guy rolls a defense dice. That's kind of annoying. This guy's hardy, but in the like... He doesn't have compounds, so I, I don't really care about his hardy. He can sit there all day and we can play with him in fatigue rounds. It's this guy's kind of annoying if he keeps rolling defense over and over again and blocking me. He might be harder to kill. This guy, like, I don't know. I could start it out with just a hit, a crazy hit. I could also start out with a multi-arrow roll and maybe hit the hardy guy and, and target this guy. Yeah. We'll roll Vereen. That's another option. Yes. That's another option. Bait is also an option to lock it in for the next battle. But I think I'll wait to roll this uh, in a later round. So that's six right there. Yeah. We'll do Wolverine to start. Because he can help me with some of this stuff too. If, if we roll him correctly. The rating orc. Go for the rating orc. Yep. That's who I think is the threat. Just because he rolls defense, these other guys don't. So they're just, they're, I'm not going to worry about them right now. This guy could be annoying in the long run. So could the recovery guy, I guess. But All right. Uh, we're going for the orc grunt. Okay, we hit him for three. Which is not enough to kill him. But he's down to one. Uh, we get a bone. I don't think we want to switch our targets. Nope. So these are done. We get a defense. Uh, so we get the Wolverine that comes out with two health. He's going to cost a dex to maintain. He's going to cost a dex to maintain and just does his auto attack of one. And we'll deploy him right here diagonally from me. Okay. Who rolls two attack? Who rolls two attack? A split to hit Hardy? Uh, I thought of that, but I think I'll wait. I think I'll wait. I could get up to Broadhead maybe and then just take out the guy. I don't know. Split targets might also be a better option. The raiding. Uh, no, no. Raiding is only if there's other orcs on the battlefield and there aren't. I think you might think of Rage where he would roll extra if he took damage. No, no. This is a troll. A troll. These are no two orcs. It's a troll and a scales uh, are the other two. Unless I'm missing an orc somewhere. I don't think so. No, no, no. There's only one orc. Only one orc, Matthias. Yeah, so I don't have to worry about raiding. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. You thought this one was. Oh, okay. <laughs> I gotcha. I thought you thought maybe this one looks like a blue on the camera, maybe. But yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's the scales. Okay. All right. We're good. We're good. Okay. Um, so next is this guy. He will just roll one attack on my Wolverine. And he rolls a bone. Sweet. Uh, next is the Brewmaster. He'll move down. He'll roll one on the Wolverine. He hits for two, but the Wolverine is hardy. So he loses one health, still alive. No recover. Uh, this orc, he will go... One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. He wants to get this way, so he'll go two this way. Yeah, I don't even know why I counted that. That's it was obviously a shorter way. It was to one of these two spots. Okay. Uh, he'll roll one defense. He rolls a bone. No defense. Sweet. Yeah, that's, I'm getting lucky on the rolls, too. That if it's looking easy, I feel like they've been rolling lots of bones for these guys today. And usually it's not like that. I roll lots of twos. But yeah, getting bones there is good. All right. Uh, so my turn, round two. Uh, I'll roll my bomb. I'm trying to defuse my jacket. It's a three. Nothing happens. Uh, I kind of want it to go off in this one or or hit a six and it's diffused on one or the other. I just want to get rid of it in this battle before the boss fight, but we might be okay. We might be okay. Um, I'm going to roll bait. I'm okay with I'll leave the defense there. I will. Oh, sorry. Uh, first is this guy, which I should do this. I should do this. He gets to attack for one. I want to attack the hardy guy. He gets a turn before me. Uh, and then on my turn, do I spend a dex to keep him around? I feel like not. I'm not going to spend a dex. So he is going to... Does he stay? No, I have to spend dex to keep him or dex to use him. I get confused with the bots, the spider bots. You must be spending the start of Gilly's turn to keep the companion in play. Okay, I'll spend a dex to keep him on the board. I'll spend a dex to keep him on the board. Yeah, they don't stick around like the spider bots. Uh, so I'll, I'll spend a dex. No, he could still attack. He could still attack. The This guy takes a turn before Gilly. And then at the start of Gilly's turn, they have separate turns. So this guy, st I still get to attack because I spent the decks to get him in play. So I get one round out of him. But then when it gets to Gilly's turn, at the start of his turn, I have to choose whether to spend a dex to keep him in for a second turn. Uh, he would still get to attack there because he gets his own turn. Uh, no. Yeah. If I don't spend the decks now, he leaves play. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it actually works that you get to keep them in. So they get if you read here, go look at the latest PDF. It describes it better, um, where this guy will, uh, they get a turn. Like you're spending decks to put them in play, that's fine. Uh, they'll get one turn, and then when it gets to Gilly's turn, at the start of his turn, I have, to, I have to make that choice, and I'll make it to keep him in play. So he takes another hit for me, at least. Uh, so I spend one deck. So I have five decks. Uh, I'll roll this, this to lock it in for a future battle, hopefully. Um... And then I will roll multi arrow. I want to split between the hardy guy, I think, and the raiding guy, and try to maybe take out the raiding guy and then uh, the orc, and then maybe also hit this guy here. So with my five, I'm going to roll these because I spent a dex to keep him in play. All right, so we got two re rolls on the, the companion die if we need it uh, in the future. Uh, we do get to. Sp oh, wow, look at this. I got uh, two twos and a one, and I got the two on the multi-arrow. This is like best case scenario. Not really this situation, but we are targeting the orc. He takes five. He's for sure dead. That's where we're targeting. But I can split it now. I don't have to do it after the hardy guy. I can apply four damage to this guy, but he does have thick skin and recover. Uh, I think I think I still just hit the hardy guy. Yeah, we'll just hit the hardy guy. Even though it would take more damage off this guy, I think I'll just use Piercing Arrow for him. Okay, so this guy's gone. Um, and he was... 
yellow, yellow, yellow. Okay, and that's all applied. Purple guy, he'll roll one on my Yeti, Yeti dies. Okay, whoops. Yeti dies. Okay, exhausted. Uh, boom. This guy now will move here. Let's say he will cover, but there's none to recover. He just rolls one attack die on me. Hits me for one, knocks away my defense. Round three. I have to roll the bomb that I threw away. So I got a five. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. <laughs> uh, okay. This bomb's stressing me out. Or this new, cool new best vest I got. This jacket is the bomb. All right. So we're going to roll. Could roll. I mean, if we get a bone, we can split targets. Take out this guy. That's fine. Let's just roll all on this guy. All offense. And one defense here. So we're going on the, the guy in front of us. Wow. Okay. So a bone. Perfect. Uh, what do we get here? Do we get enough to split? So we got a five here that would apply to defense dice, but he has none. It does ignore thick skin. So it's kind of like one damage. We need six to take him out. Uh, but we only have five additional here. I could spend these two bones to split. And... That lets me select a new target after applying at least one die to Gilly's initial target. So I'll probably split because I want to take this guy out because he will move in and roll an attack die on me. I can't remove this guy, so I just need to reduce attack dice coming at me. I think that's what I want to do. So I will apply four of the damage to this guy, ignoring thick skin. Takes him down to one health left, but he will recover on his turn one. And then so that's four to him, and I'll apply one die to this guy, and we'll take out the hardy. Boom. Okay. Done. And exhausted. Okay. Uh, it's gone. Okay. He'll come at me with uh, recover one after he's done moving and selecting his target. So he gets recover one up to two. And then he's going to roll one attack die on me. Oh, I need to spend the bones. The bones are spent. Uh, and then he'll hit me for one. I have no defense. Whoops. I bumped a die. So I lose one health. Uh, anything else? What am I doing with this here? Saving that for the tyrant fight, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, round four. You can kill the troll. Oh, yeah, it would kill the troll. Yeah, because no thick skin. Yeah, that was dumb. But it's okay. Either way, it got a guy rolling an attack die off the board. It would have been the same result, really. Uh, yeah, if I didn't split. I was being dumb with the math. For some reason, I was knowing I could ignore I could ignore thick skin, but it still was mathing in my head, thinking I couldn't take him out. Wait, didn't I have... No, he was 5 health. What did I roll? I don't know what I did there. Yeah, I goofed up. <laughs> it happens. All right. Um, so bomb jacket. <gasps> we got the six. We got the six. Woo. All right. So this jacket is the bomb. Bomb is defused. Immediately draw two loot. And we get rid of this. Wow. I had five damage. <laughs> two loot. Mixed berries and reflex powder. Ooh, re-rolling a die on my turn. That's great for the pets. That's great for the pets. Mixed berries. Heal yourself three in battle or five out. This includes training, lock picking, and initiative. Ooh, initiative die. That's really good for that too. Okay. Okay. I like that jacket. That was fun. All right. It's working out for me here. 
Okay, I don't have to carry that into the Tyrant battle. I would have been okay if it would have hit me with three damage too. I just want to get rid of it. <laughs> All right, four attacks. Uh, one defense. Uh, uh oh, uh, did we get enough here? I don't think we did. So we got two bones. Do I use that reroll right now? I don't think so. Nah, I don't think so. One defense. Uh, we get two attack, which thick skin only removes one. This guy's down to one health left. <laughs> Stupid. He's going to recover again, too. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I don't need to kill him that bad. He's only hitting me for one attack die. If he didn't have this trap on him, though, I would so spend reflex powder once to reroll an attack die and make sure this guy gets wiped out. But I'm okay with that. He's only hitting me for one. He's like a one-pointer. Uh, which will go right now. And I got a defense. Uh, ooh, I still lose a health, though. He hits for two. So he knocks away my defense. Round five. Gilly. Let's do the same thing. Four attack, one defense. Yep. There we go. We rolled five. That definitely kills him. Uh, we get the fortune discovery. So camo's pointless. But I could carry it over to the next... Next one. I'm going to get it anyway. Might as well, right? Might as well. Uh, let me just roll it in a sec. Apologies accepted. <laughs> Bomb diffuse. Yes, Matthias. You called it right. You, I'm very sorry. I'm sorry I doubted you. <laughs> ah, I rolled a crappy camo again. Is that... Oh, how many sides of that die has one? Is it like five of them? No, it's only two. It's only two sides have a one, and I seem to roll one very often. I never really see the twos and threes. I don't know. That's this, this camo die is not working out for me, but I'll take it. It's free. Uh, okay, so this guy's done. Let's reset. And those who are joining late, stay tuned at the end of the stream. Uh, before I let you guys go, we're gonna set up a poll, depending on which campaign card we draw, and you guys can vote on the poll within the next like whatever twenty something hours before the next stream tomorrow. Uh, to help me pick if the Tyrant choice is a choice, you guys can help me pick it. And also you can help me pick which training points slash loot uh, we get to carry forward, depending on what we get. So I'll make the poll and I'll share it in the chat so you guys can vote before you leave. Uh, and or if you're watching this later before the next stream, uh, link will be down in the description below to the poll uh, after I create it. And uh, you guys can vote there before the next stream. So if you're watching this after we're done streaming, uh, you can vote still. All right. Mm -mm -mm. also follow on twitter and stuff that links are down below i'll post it on twitter and facebook after too and in the patreon uh to remind everyone where the poll is so if you guys want to get involved so don't feel like you have to stay for it you can catch it later i'll, I'll share it all and try to get you guys involved okay uh that's done all right this guy was dead we are done the battle i'm just cleaning up So I have four health left. Probably should heal. Uh, I have a training point. I, I feel like I should take health. Unless there's a die I should take to try to carry forward. But I feel like I have some okay options here. I don't need like return fires pointless. Brute Buster? I don't think so. A weighted camo die? Bad weight. Yes. <laughs> health. Yeah, health would be good. I think I'm good for decks, right? I don't. I can go in and do the do an attack of like four. I have six decks, so I can do a four attack, plus piercing, and even roll my pet still, or a defense. And it's still good. Decks could be okay, but yeah, I'm gonna go for health because we're going into a tyrant fight with only six health. Doesn't feel right. Oh yes, we have incense. Yes, we have incense. I don't need extra attack. I don't need extra decks. I got incense. I'm going to smell nice going into that fight. Or a distraction, I guess. I don't know what this incense. Oh, it's a foul odor was strong throughout the campsite. I could also faintly smell the incense. Nuggets journal. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that was our training point. Oh, we get a loot. Oh, we get a loot. Hmm. 
Could I have used this at the end of the battle there to heal instead? Yeah. No, I'll keep the mixed berries. I'll just get rid of skinning knife, worst case. Uh, we'll see what we get. Gadget arm. If a training attempt fails, you may make another training attempt. Well, that's an easy choice. That is a super easy choice. Yeah, we'll save it. Okay, so that's gone. Loot's gone. Not worth it. All right, training point done. Progress we don't need. Boom. All right, recovery. Uh, I think we just get our health. All the way up to our seven. Yep, up to seven. Recovery done. Day nine. We got to fight Nom or we fail. This is our last chance. It's nine days thanks to our card we had at the beginning. So we definitely have our six progress. It's day nine. We got to do it. So let's get Nom ready here. So clubbing with Nom. So we get Nom. He's on the queue. Battle uh, Party of one ignores the battle queue. We add Nom to the top. We don't care about this gear lock thing. So thick skin three. He ignores the first three damage. Does not ignore true damage though. Uh, recover one. He gains one HP at the start of his turn. We've been dealing with that all day. Uh, then he has Om Nom, which is two out of four, six sides. All defense dice are removed from target before applying damage, which is kind of crazy. This is why I didn't value defense in this play. And then even because his Thunder Club does true damage, uh, he could knock the target to the furthest position away from its current position on the battle mat and deal one true damage. So uh, seventh dex would have not been a bad call just for the movement in the fight. That would have been another reason to have extra dex. But then again, I don't need that dex till later in the fight after hopefully I already have my Wolverine out, because I'll get to re-roll him to make sure he's on like the best side, hopefully. And I'll have used some of these dice, so I won't need that whole dex later. Alright, so let's get Nom on the board here. He's going initiative two only. He is six health, melee, can move diagonal. I can't get away from him coming at me since he moves diagonal on the mat. Uh, I got five. It's definitely more than him. Um, I don't think it really matters. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. I guess putting the pet in here, though, would help me. So, yeah, it does matter. I want to be further away because I have a Wolverine now. Duh. I don't need to move. I'm ranged. Yep. And he doesn't need to be a. I don't need to be adjacent like some of the tyrants to actually attack him, too. That's another thing I don't need to worry about. So there's his die. All right. I think we're okay. All right. So my turn. No bomb jacket to roll, which is sweet. Uh, we're going to use infused incense. It's two dice. No decks required. Do we? I'm just looking after we're done here. Returning home. Uh, do I lose my locked dice? Clear all dice from active and lock slots. Yeah, you clear them. Okay, so I can't carry these forward as the way, like in my lock slot, so I lose those. That's no big deal. Oh, yeah, Woven Snare. Of course. Of course, Woven Snare would go there. We all know this. Yes, forgot about the Woven Snare. Uh, and it's a red bone. <laughs> Woo! Six attack die and ignore thick skin. So the decks of six so remember these don't count if i do four attack dice and the piercing arrow that's five i can do one more which i think will be the pet and we could re-roll the pet die if we need to try to get one with more health or a side i don't have to maintain so that's our infused incense spent okay Oh, we do have this to re-roll, but I, I think I want to carry these two forward if I can, if it allows us to carry like two loot points. Uh, here we go. OK, 
Okay, so the Wolverine, uh, hold on, let's see, it might be even older, let's check. So two bones here. We get the piercing arrow of three, but he has no defense, but we ignore thick skin. We rolled one, two, three, four, five attack. So I don't think that takes him out because he's six health. Although I could reflex powder and try to re-roll like uh, an attack die to get a two, but I, I don't care. That's fine. He's He does have recover one. But I should be able to get through it. I didn't one-shot him. Oh yeah, the pet won't really get through, right? Because he's got thick skin. Hmm. Oh, I have Broadhead. Yeah, I could just save up for Broadhead. Yeah. I think I'll just take this guy as a bone, to be honest. I don't think I care about him hitting me. Yeah, maybe I do. Maybe I do. Let's just use the, the bait. Let's use the bait. We'll re-roll twice. Uh, do I want to keep that one? No, I'll re-roll again. Yes, yes, look at this. We got the good side. We got the good side. Three health. Not that we really need it, but we got it. So because it's the good side, we should actually use this side. <laughs> so let's go uh, diagonal. Three health. I don't need to maintain him. Uh, but he just has an auto attack one, but at least he's hardy. Sure. Bone reroll? Reroll one of the bones. Oh, yes, you're right. I took those away so quick I forgot. But do I use this? I, I might want to save this carrying it forward. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm, if I take him down to one, he recovers one, and then I just need to hit him for, what would he be at, two? I need five to come through. I think I could just take the bones and get to Broadhead eventually. Yeah, I probably should just re-roll a bone. <laughs> No, I think the difference is just the art. Yeah, it's just the art. Yeah, it's just the art. <laughs> no, we're going to hit him with a broadhead. We're going to hit him with a broadhead. Worst case. Because he's only going to attack this guy, right? So I don't need to worry. And if he rolls Thunderclub, let me just read Thunderclub one more time. After Nom's attack, knock target to the furthest position away. Yeah, we're fine. Because he would just knock the Wolverine like down to here. Or up here. <laughs> He'll die either way. Yeah, I'm leaving it. I'm leaving it. I want to keep this reflex powder nice and fresh. Okay, so this is exhausted. I may regret this, but uh, I think we're okay. Uh, so that guy's there. I'm done. Nom. Oh yeah, we got to remove all of his five health we took off, right? He's down to one. Okay. So now we will... Just move him this way. He'll recover one. He's going to roll one attack, one defense, and Thunderclub on this guy. So he knocks away the defense. He didn't even get Thunderclub. Uh, he'll get one defense. Oh, I forgot that could be a thing. And he just attacks one. This guy's hardy anyway, but it's still one. doesn't matter. Okay, so he didn't knock him away. That's fine. All right, round two. This guy gets to go. He'll attack for one. He knocks the defense away. That's a thing. And that's it. I'll go. I don't have to maintain the Wolverine because I got the good side. So I don't have to spend a dex on this. I'll do my four attack. One defense. 
I don't need to roll multi arrow. There's no point on that. I'm obviously targeting Nom. Okay, so we got a bone. Uh, four attack. Does thick skin three. He's down to one health. <laughs> All right, we're one away from Broadhead though. <laughs> this hopefully works out okay. Uh, Nom. He'll roll. Uh, he recovers after he moves his next target. He'll attack and defense. He rolls a bone, no attack. But he does get that defense back. But my Wolverine will help me there. Round three. Okay, Wolverine. Uh, just knocks away the defense. Oh, I'm forgetting this. <laughs> yeah, I should have rolled that as my extra de uh, extra decks. Yeah, so we get it. Broadhead, he dies. Yeah, I was being dumb. I totally forgot about this die. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So either way, I'll roll it with this roll, whatever. He hits him. I roll, I got two, and then, yeah, he should be dead already. I forgot about that die. I even had the spare decks for it. Uh, so, yeah, we'll just roll this. Uh, we, yeah, we still wouldn't even kill them, so we do need Broadhead. So, that works out. Boom, we got him. We got him. There will be a second episode. <laughs> Woo! All right. Okay, so this is used, consumed. I definitely use that. Uh, I'm going to clear my lock slot. Clear active slot. Let's put all of our stuff out here so we can look. Um, we'll do this in a second. So did I not even get hit? I didn't even get hit. That's crazy. So I'm at 7 health. We got our Nate, which is great. Our Wolverine survived till the end of the battle. Wow. Uh, Nom's Tyrant die. We may need that. Okay, so I'm just going to reset up here and then we can look at what's on my mat. Alright, so we're going to read the epilogue. This is gone. Epilogue Nom. Typical troll glyphs are scrawled on the chamber walls. Trolls seen, seem centuries away from written language, using crudely illustrated figures to communicate with other races. The entire wall of the cavern is filled with two-way communication. Every crudely drawn series is followed with a much cleaner response. The meaning is tough to decipher, but it's easy to make out several gearlock figures and buildings. Each has a bright red slash drawn over them. At the end of the drawings, Nom's signature, a chunk of wall destroyed by his thunderclub. <laughs> so this is thunderclub. We may or may not get to have this depending on um, the campaign card we get next. But you get to roll it during recovery phase. You could either get Bone Broth, heal HP to full, does not count as your individual recovery option, or Cash Smash, instantly opens a lock trove loot, does not count as lock pick attempt. Having seen bloody battles for decades, the Thunder Club is pleased to spend retirement smashing chest and stirring soup. Excuse me. But we may not get this. We may not get this. I'll put this right here. Actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to clear this. We're going to have some fun here. It's not over yet. Don't go anywhere. All right. So let's put his head. Where's his head? In our little Age of Tyranny mat here, which I never really used before. So one defeated. Okay. We put Gilly in here. And now we get to choose uh, stuff based on what we see on the next card. So we're going to hold Thunderclub, just keep it nearby. All right. So we discard this. This is our campaign we just had. Campaign starter card, gone. Uh, no, Thunderclub, you keep it as long as you keep it as loot. As long as you keep it here as loot, uh, you can keep rolling it every recovery phase. You just have to want. You just have to use up a loot slot to carry it. And then the tough choices come later as you beat more tyrants, especially in solo. I got to carry all that stuff, so I may throw it away after using it for like an adventure or half an adventure or something. But we might not even get it. We might not even get it. Okay. Uh, okay. We are going to pick uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine here. I don't have a D12 or anything. I'll just pick random. I'll just shuffle here. And we get that one. All right. And what do we get? So this normally would be at the start. I'll read 
the start at the start of the next episode. But right now, what we want to determine is to help you, to, for you guys to help me set up the next scenario and help influence and be a part of this playthrough. Uh, so party rewards, we just get a loot. So we don't uh, get the tyrant die. So no tyrant die, no thunder club. We missed that. We don't even get this. Forget what I said. Doesn't even count. Gone. Thunder club's out out of the playthrough. All right. So we get a loot. And we get Treasure Trove Map. Shuffle special encounter the Ebonite Doorway into your encounter deck if it has not already been completed. Okay, so I have a slot for that. I'll keep that. We're going to get a Scar. I'll deal with that right now. Oh, sorry. So Drone Aid. Additional recovery phase individual option. So this is for the next adventure. Reassign uh, a single skill or stat. Skill profession line restrictions apply. So I can reassign a skill or a stat. So I can take a training point, basically, that I've spent and reassign it somewhere else as an individual option. So that means instead of healing, instead of looking for better loot, or instead of scouting, I now have a fourth option in the next adventure where I could switch out a point we've used. So that may matter on what I carry forward. Okay. And then I'm going to get a scar right now. So let's get that scar. Whoops. So we'll just shuffle this up. It's a skill. Once per battle unless otherwise specified. Uh, no, no, not for this one. This, this, this Thunder Club was a recovery phase. So it, it's not during. You roll it only during the recovery phase. This, So it just acts like a piece of loot that you can only use in the recovery phase. You don't use it in battle or roll it in battle at all. Uh, yeah, there's no point in doing that. But the other ones, there are some that are weapons that just work like skill dice. They stay right on them. They work as skill dice. Uh, okay. Training points could be skills. Uh, so let's do... All right, so the scar we get. The tyrant itself wasn't the worst part of this battle. It was the baddie that snuck up behind you and left bite marks on your neck that has left you rattled, rattled long after the battle's end. What?! Gilly may ignore this scar. <laughs> what? I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> yeah, today I have a horseshoe up my butt, by the way. I don't know if you guys knew that. I'm sitting on it right now. Wow. Oh my god, look at how bad this one is. You can no longer train in your deck stat. Place a scar token next to the stat to represent this. <laughs> wow wow we got lucky there all right so that's discarded discarded wow <laughs> you guys watch me just shuffle i wasn't even looking at the cards <laughs> and plus i can't read that small font by the way unless i like hold it up to my face <laughs> All right, so party choice. Okay, so you guys are going to help me in a sec decide the tyrant before the next playthrough and which four trained points and which three loot we take over. And we get to start at day three with two progress points, six and eight. So keep this in mind. We choose the, the tyrant and we start already with two progress and on day three. So we have very little time to build up. And we all, it's going to be a short one because we only have six to eight. So the tyrant matters. So you have to be careful at who, which tyrant you want to rush into a fight with, right? So what we're going to do, it said may ignore it. You can keep the scar. Oh, did it say may? Why would you not want to ignore that? <laughs> it does say may. <laughs> uh, why? Yeah, why would I ever keep that as a scar? Maybe if I was full on decks, if I was at six in my deck slot there uh, in the die, maybe I say I don't want to train on it anymore. But then I would have to keep, I wouldn't be able to keep all six going forward. So that doesn't make sense either. I don't know. That's a weird one. That's a weird one. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, so. All right. So what we need to do, uh, I need to build this. Um, I need to build the... Um, these, uh, what am I trying to say? The pull. The pull. So, first thing, uh, training points we can keep. 
So if you want me to keep something from these stats, because so you can keep any some stats points, or you can keep skill dice or a mix of. So we get to keep four trained points. So I'm actually going to put that in the poll and I'll actually set it so you guys have to vote for four things on that uh, question. So our options are these four, uh, woven snare. Okay. What's the other one? Multi arrow. Okay. Just bear with me. I'm just going to build this thing here. Uh, piercing arrow. Here. Where is it? P I E R C I N G. Piercing arrow. Uh, we also have our Wolverine. Call Wolverine. AKA Little Yeti. <laughs> uh, anything else? I don't think so, right? I didn't take anything really. I used all this stuff. Okay, so that's the first. Uh, now we're going to add another question, and it's going to be called uh, Which Loot? Loot. Which loot to throw away? I'll share the link with you guys in one sec as soon as I'm done this, if for those who want to stick around. If not, I'll share it out on social media. Just follow, follow me on the links down below. Um, but I'm not going to take any input from the chat. You'll have to vote because what I'll do is tomorrow when we, we start up the stream, we'll go and see the results and we'll pick from that. So, uh, yeah. I want everyone to have a chance. Yeah, even those who aren't Patreons, everyone watching, anyone following this through. So if you're watching this later and episode two hasn't gone live, uh, you can still vote. I'll put the link in the description of this video. Which loot to throw away? Option one, skinning knife. One use left. <laughs> and reflex. Powder and next treasure trove map and mixed berries. Mixed berries. I mean, you guys can tank me if you want and make me throw away something that's really useful. <laughs> I'm okay. We could try to try to mess around. Uh, multiple choice. It's required and. Whoops. No check boxes. Response. Uh, select at most. Oh, never mind. We'll just do radio button. Radio button. Okay, and then we need to add one more question. Sorry. Uh, we need to add so what I think based on votes because people get to use multiple vote points so if you want like me to take more than one attack just vote for attack and I'll do some kind of math or something on it we'll figure it out at the start of the next one if people are recommending take a bunch of health points if health is like killing it at the top we might just wait it so that if if it's winning like two to one to the next option I'll take like two health points and then one of the next option, that kind of thing. I'll just have to make it go. I don't, I don't want to put like all the separate options of each single point. Uh, it, we'll just discuss it at the start. And if it's really like decks is a, is a really voted high, we might just take a couple decks instead of one. Uh, we'll see what the results say though first. I'll adjust in the next episode and, and we may work it out different if that doesn't work out that well. Uh, I just thought of this before starting the stream, so. Yeah, no, you just get one point. It's actually right here, trained points. Four trained points. So I could keep all my health and like one attack. That's all I can carry forward. That would be my four trained points. Or I can take like two skill dice, a dex, and a health. And that's four trained points. So just all those points we earn during uh, battles, like the little gear symbol. It's each, each one of those counts as one point going forward. Uh, and then what tyrant... 
should uh, we choose? Option one, drill in. Option two, mole mesh. Option three, duster. Option four, uh, who else we still have? Gendrix. So keep in mind this is a shorter playthrough. Um, we have, what is it? Uh, six, six progress required and eight days, eight days. Starting on day three with two progress. Okay. Uh, so what do we have next is, uh, we said Duster, Drellin, Morrow, 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 Morrow. There should be one more. Goblin King. Goblin King. Yeah, so Nom's missing, so there should be six left. Yep, got it. Uh, multiple choice required, sure. Let me just preview it. Okay, so it's, this should... So here's a preview. So I threw in here, this is the, what I'm gonna link in a second. Let me know if there's something I'm missing here. So it's for the next playthrough. Here's a link to the next playthrough video. Here's a link to Gilly's sheet if you want to read. Uh, I don't know why there's numbers in there, but that's that's a. <laughs> uh, why is there a? Uh, I must have been playing around. Okay. Um, refresh. There we go. All right. So Gilly's sheet is linked here. This is Chip Theory's link to the latest PDF. So if you want to look at that to know what any of these things do. So we can keep four training points. You've got to select four things. So I guess you can't really select health multiple times. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. So we'll just do it this way. And then which loot to throw away. Oh yeah, I could add second options at least. Yeah, that's a good call, Sam. I like that, I like that. Let me, let's do that, let's do that. So let's go, how do we just add, uh, I don't know if we can drag, second health, second attack. I like that, thank you, that, that actually helps. It doesn't get too crazy. I just didn't want to add like health, 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 attack, 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 like it, it would just be weird. Um, second dex, and do we have, oh, we only have one defense, so we can't add that one. <laughs> So that's not bad, that's not bad. Yeah, because then we will probably want to carry a skill forward, like maybe the Wolverine or something. We'll see, we'll see. And that should have, let's see if that fixes it. Okay, so this is what it'll be. So you vote for four things here, and then you'll do this one where you pick one option of what we're gonna throw away, and then what tyrant we should choose, and then you submit it. And that will go into a poll, like a, a record results, and then I'll bring those up at the start of the next stream and we'll see where everyone voted and then we'll we'll go from there and we'll pick our stuff to go forward. I think that's everything, right? That should cover all the options. I think that should cover all the options that we have here. So tyrant choice, the loot, the train points. Yeah, nothing else to choose, right? So, boom. So there's a final picture uh, for you guys to see. And what you're deciding is what we carry forward here, but I'm not really gonna use this, we'll just, set it up tomorrow um, but yeah we'll be back tomorrow 1 p.m uh, eastern same time and i'll drop the link right now in the chat so let me find out how to how to get a link for this where are you click the send no i don't want to i just want the link there it is i found it let's shorten it copy so you guys can let me know in the chat if this works. <laughs> I get to carry over three loot. Three loot. So I have four. You're just going to choose which one I don't take. 
Okay, so let me drop it in the chat here. Did it work? Okay, somebody click on it, let me know if it works and everything worked okay. And if there's any improvements, I'll wait for a couple minutes, you can let me know and then I'll share this link after the stream. It worked? Oh, Sam, that was fast. <laughs> okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna put it in the description of this video so those who are watching this later uh, can get the link in there. Boom. Vote here, episode two, set up, save. Okay, so it's in the, in the description of this video. Uh, for those watching later, if we haven't started episode two, if it's not after noon or after 1 p.m. Eastern on July 4th, 2020, you still have time. So go vote and we'll see what we carry forward. And I want to try this for each episode so you guys can help me. And after the third episode, we'll have more time if we make it to the fourth because uh, it will be like the following week. So thank you everyone for participating. I appreciate that. I just figured it's a good way to get you guys involved and those who couldn't watch live or stick around, they can still get involved too. Um, so I think it's pretty cool. So I'll tweet that out, Facebook, post it, put it on Patreon. So hopefully everyone who even didn't join who will watch later can, can check it out. Um, but thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody. That's awesome. Awesome. All right, so that's our playthrough. Sweet, thank you, awesome. <laughs> Everyone's letting me know it worked. It's only June, uh, not July. Oh, did I say July? I meant June. Sorry, wrong J. Oh man, I'm tired. All right. So uh, we have another stream coming up uh, in two and a half-ish hours. Uh, we're going to be playing um, Liberation of Wrightburg. It's a fun, lighter, lighter weight co-op fantasy theme game with the Legend of Andor theme. Uh, it's actually pretty good. I was shocked by it. I didn't think I'd be having so much fun with it, but I've played it already like seven times uh, and I didn't need to, but I had fun. I could play with my daughter. Uh, it's kind of quick. We might do two playthroughs tonight to show the game off. But if you're interested in a fantasy co-op game uh, that has variable powers on the characters and it's kind of lighter, uh, but you can play it in like 30 minutes uh, if you know what you're doing. But it's kind of fun. Or it could go a little longer. Uh, but we'll be showing that off tonight on stream. So if you're curious about that, uh, head on over to youtube.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. The upcoming streams are there. And you can set the reminders for whichever um, streams you want to catch. Uh, also, you can subscribe and hit the notification bell uh, down below and set alerts on and you'll get notified every time we go live or post a new video. Uh, thank you to the Patreons. A bunch of you are in the chat. You guys are all awesome. You're amazing. Thank you for upping your pledges, some of you today. You guys are nuts. You don't need to do that stuff, but I do appreciate it. They're all trying to help us get to our goals. If you're interested in our Patreon goals, links are down below. I'm going to be adding more and talking about them more in the future. Uh, and you guys in the Discord are recommending some stuff. I kind of saw it earlier, but I was busy like kind of setting up the stream. Uh, but I will sit down later and I want to read through what your guys' feedback was. If you are a Patreon of our producer tier level, uh, you can get in the Discord, uh, help the channel grow, help uh, influence what kind of goals we do on the channel and that kind of thing. Uh, you can also vote on stuff we play on the channel or things like that. Uh, thank you, everybody. If you're curious, links down below again to go over to Patreon, check that out. Um, and if you are a Patreon in the producer tier, set up your Discord, link it with uh, Patreon if you don't know how to do that. Uh, Google it, because I don't know exactly how it works, but it's supposedly really easy. Um, and you can jump in the Patreon if you're already in the producer tier level. And if you're not, you can modify your pledge if you uh, aren't in a tier yet. If you're like already donating and you're not in that tier, you can modify it and mess around. Uh, I've been told it's pretty, pretty easy. Uh, but anyways, thank you everyone for your support. I much appreciate it. Hit that like button if you want to see too, more Too Many Bones on the channel. That helps other people find these, helps more people come and view them, helps dictate what we kind of play on the channel also going forward, depending on what gets more results. Uh, views, what you guys like to watch based on watch minutes, all that stuff. That will kind of dictate games that I keep continue to keep playing over and over again. Um, that's how I work here. All right. Anyways, thanks all for watching. Uh, we'll see you guys in a couple hours. If not, we'll be back tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern for episode two of our solo playthrough with Gilly. He survived day one uh, or adventure one with multiple days. Uh, so we'll be in the next one. Uh, so see you for that. Thanks all for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe out there, everybody.